everybody. Oh, oh, channel members in the house, channel members in the house. Edward Smart is a, a value channel member, and so is Designs by CAD Pro. And shout out to their channels. Their channels are linked up down below in my description box. You can check out their channels and shout out to their channels. Um, Edward Smart is a flight and aviation channel, and Designs by CAD Pro is a wonderful art channel. Welcome. So I'm started a little early. Our guest, my guest isn't even here. My co-host, Balls Blind Super the Soul, is not here either. Oh, that reminds me. I didn't put Paul Paul's link down below in the description box. Okay, I got to remind that. Remind, my, got to remind. I have to remember to do that later. But our guest, our guest tonight, world famous blind artist John Bramblett. I was just looking him up and I was, I mean, I wasn't even looking him up yesterday. I was looking up about art, about blindness, not necessarily. I wasn't even looking up about blind artists. I was just looking up about art, about the subject of blindness on Pinterest. And his name came up over and over again. He's all over Pinterest and I'm sure everywhere else. And he's been interviewed by CBS. He's been interviewed by the Dallas Art, Art Museum. Oh, and on many, many other places. He's given his own TED Talk. And um, and he is the world's only blind muralist. Yes, painting murals. We're going to find out more about that, too. He comes to us from Texas. And I'm going to find out more about him in terms of um, to what extent his blindness is, whether it's, you know, as you know, if everybody's been listening closely to me over the past year, you're not either, you're not 100% totally blind or 100% you can see. Blindness is on a spectrum. Legal blindness begins at 2200 vision all the way to total blindness. And it's on a total spectrum. So I'm, I'm curious to know whether John Bramblett is totally blind or ha has some vision because he he loves color. He loves color. He, so he, he paints and and doesn't shy away from color at all with his vision disability. I love color, too. So let's see who's here. Hi, Davey. Coming to us from the UK. Grayscale painting. Hello. Good to see you guys in here. My and uh, just, me, just a minute, I see our guest is here. He's backstage. It's either that or my co-host. I believe it's him. I believe it's our guest. He's a little early. And um, John, if you can hear me, I'm just going to make a little, make a few announcements before we get started because we are a little early. It's five minutes before five. And just for a couple more minutes, I'm going to make some announcements that, let's see, for one, on Tuesday, on this Tuesday, that what is that? December seventh at six. At, it'll either be five between five and six p.m. Please keep a heads up because I'll be scheduling the live stream. It's me and Mary as usual. She's Pittsburgh Artist Studio. Me and Mary at Pittsburgh Artist Studio on my channel. We we do our weekly live art stream with all different kinds of themes each week. So that is happening on Tuesday. Um, I have already scheduled that. So um, if you go to my homepage, you can set a reminder for that. Then next Saturday is my birthday. I am going to have my games live stream as usual on Saturday, Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll be doing my games live stream along with my birthday celebration. And... So, oh, hello, Jordan Mahoney, the blind world coming to us from Ireland is here. Hi, Jordan. Jordan, stick around. You guys definitely stick around for our guest tonight. We're a little early and I'm not bringing, he's, he's waiting backstage. I'm going to bring him on in just a couple minutes. The world famous uh, blind artist, John Bramblett. Very, has very interesting story. Okay, and now let's see, because I, I could, let me see what my time is. I have time for my Etsy, let's see, my Etsy video or my channel membership video. Hold on. 
I just played my quick channel membership video to you guys for uh, inviting people for channel membership. Okay, here goes my little ad. You don't need to see 2020 to have artistic vision. And that's an original quote of mine because I am a legally blind artist whose passion is painting and many other kinds of art, which I love to share with you guys on my channel. My channel is now offering paid membership with each tier, that's four tiers of membership, and each tier has special benefits and perks. Membership level number one offers fun loyalty badges and shout outs of your channel in my videos and live streams. Other levels of membership are being offered original pieces of my artwork as like in a hand painted card or original small painting sent to you each month. There will also be members only videos and live streams featuring behind the scenes and also special inspirational art techniques tailored to member requests. There will also be merchandise discounts of 10 to 30 percent on all my original art in my Etsy shop. So check out more of the details of membership posted right next to this video. Upon joining you'll be getting a happy dance for me. Okay welcome back welcome back and hello blind Neil and hello Mrs. V Mrs. V and Davy JY Art with a pen. Thank you for coming in. Welcome, well. Oh, and I forgot. I hardly ever do this, but I I'm simulcasting to my Facebook page tonight, plus my Facebook one of my Facebook art groups. So, without further ado, without further ado, let's bring let's bring our guest on tonight, John Bramblett. Hey there! Thanks so much for having me. I know. Thank you so much for joining us. You're famous and you're going to come here to this show. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. This is awesome. I, I, this, thanks so much for having me. I, I, this is such a great thing to be able to have a place where, where non visual, visual artists can, 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 can all get together. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's not just artists. It's, it, we started it with my co, my co host. It was his idea. He had a he with his vision. He has a problem getting onto Streamyard, so he he has to have his girlfriend help him. But because of that, he wanted he I offered to help do this show with him because he didn't think he could do the show on his own because of um, his vision maybe getting in the way of getting with the technology. So mm -hmm. I I offered to do. We've been doing it about fourteen months now, and um, but we have all different guests on. And they're not always art, but they're not always artists, but yeah. Well, that's great, man. Well, that's, well, that's great. So, so you've been doing it for, for 14 months. That's a, that's a good time to start during the whole COVID thing where everybody is wanting to get online and we're all, we're all living our lives more online now than, than ever before. So that's, it's, it's good timing in a way. <laughs> yeah. And I, I didn't, we didn't even plan it that way. It just happened like that. So yeah. So <laughs> we're going to, um. Let me see. Let me let me check. I, yeah, I said hello to those people. So mm -hmm. we're like the way that I was going to ask you. Well, my oh yeah, Paul, who's Paul's Blind Soup for the Soul. That's the name of his channel. He says he might be up to about half hour late. He's usually never late. So he, but he did tell me he's going to be about half hour late. So he's still going to be joining us, and uh, in about half an hour. So, but the way the questions were going to go is that I ask you about different decades in your like beginning with the first one or two decades in your life of when you're like, especially when your vision um, disability started. So did it, was it caused by injury or disease? And so, and then I go from decade to decade, just depending on like what different things impacted your life, depending on your answers. And I ask, well, how did that impact? How did your vision impact that? Or how did you get overcome things like that? Whatever you say. So well, Diana, please, please feel free to ask anything that you want. And, and, you know, I, I you know, I'm pretty much an open book. So, <laughs> okay, so, um, well, I, so I, I just read last night that your, your um, vision disability started in your tw mid twenties. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I, um, I, I, I've had ep 
epilepsy ever since I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. And, um, but, but the vision didn't, didn't start until, um, until later. Oh, so, all oh, right. So, but, and then you became legal, you became blind or legally blind in, in your mid twenties. I did. I, I was having, um, I, I had, I had epilepsy when I was a kid, but I had some other, other issues going on. And then I ended up getting Lyme's disease. But I started having these seizures because a combination of all that. And I could tell you all about it, but it's not that interesting. But if you, if you want to know, I can give you all the nitty gritty. But mm -hmm. um, but but the culmination was I was ended up having these seizures that I was going in a status epilepticus where most of the time when you have a seizure, you come out of it. But these are seizures where they just keep ramping up. And and eventually my, my breathing would stop and my heart would stop. And. Um, and that was causing some, some, some damage to my brain. And my neurologist has said it was like, it was like getting hit in the back of the head over and over and over again. And, oh. and that's where the occipital lobe is where, the, you know, your vision. And um, so from that, I lost about 40% of my hearing and all of my vision. Uh, but the vision went over about, gosh, about five or six months. And we didn't really see it as a vision problem. We just saw it as a, as a seizure problem. We thought, you know, goodness, if we can get these seizures under control, everything will be fine but the vision was getting worse and worse. And, um, so then it became a vision problem. <laughs> and, um, so yeah, it, but it, it took a little while. Like my vision was at first, it was measured, I think in April at 20 over 400. And then a month later it was like 20 over 800. And then, um, so a little time later it was, gosh, I, I don't even remember what that reading was. And then after that, they couldn't, they couldn't measure any vision. Like, but, but I still have light, light perception. I, I don't see form or shape or color or anything, but, but my eyes still work. And that was something I, I didn't know anything about blindness when I lost my eyesight. Yeah. But, me um, neither, right. <laughs> it's a lot to learn, isn't it? It's a, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a steep curve, but, um, but my, you know, my eyes are fine. So the, so it's still telling my brain that there's light coming in, but it's almost like my eyes are, my brain's almost like a TV with a, the, the cable disconnected. So it's like the TV works, my eyes work, but it's not able to make an image anymore. So at least because the optic nerves were damaged. But um, so I usually wear sunglasses because light just gives me headaches. My, uh, my eyes want to dilate, dilate, constrict. And, and so, and you, you know, so I, and I just like, yeah, so I'll wear sunglasses at night <laughs> now, which so, <laughs> is a weird look. And you are, you are totally blind. Yeah, I yeah, I don't have any vision that to, that, that they can measure anymore. Um, um, but but being able to detect light does help. It helps. Um, it helps me stay oriented. You know, like I don't uh -huh. fall over as much. Like, yeah. um, you know, and stuff like that. So it's funny how your brain will learn to adapt with all this. And and I was fortunate too because I was an art nerd all my life. <laughs> so I was an art. You know, mm -hmm. growing up, I did every kind of drawing that I could. In in college, I did all this different types of art. So whenever the eyesight went, I didn't have to relearn how to do art. Um, you know, I just had to learn new ways. Just just like just like you have to learn new ways to do everything, you yeah. know, to read, to get around, to do all that. So, you know. So before I go into like like other like uh, other times, I mean other ages that you had with this, but but I'm like fascinated that so you you can't see, but you but color is a big part of your art, right? It is. I, I, you know, that was one thing whenever I was sighted, it's funny. I didn't use any color when I was sighted. I just drew, I love to draw. I didn't think I would be a good painter and I didn't, I wasn't courageous enough to try something I didn't think I'd be good at. So I did all kinds of drawing. I did drafting, you know, I could do draft houses, you know, the blueprints and all, mm -hmm. um, I, I could do portrait work, but, um, but no, but no painting. And, um, but then whenever I lost my eyesight, I couldn't feel pens or pencils or graphite anymore. You know, it's, they're great, but they don't leave any kind of texture. So mm -hmm. I started getting into paint because that's actually, actually leaves something I could touch. Yeah. But also I was really worried that I would forget what color looked like. And I thought, even yeah. though I can't see color, I can touch it. So I just wanted to, I was just really, I was really concerned. I, I didn't, I didn't know what blindness was, what it meant, what, what the future would be like. And I was mm -hmm. just afraid I would forget everything. So, Which is untrue. So, you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> well, I I watched a video about you like about a year ago or so, where you you um know the color. You can tell what color it is because you've made your colors have different textures. Yeah, here, 
Okay, I got a medium right here. Um, I'm working on a weird horse painting, but um, over here. <laughs> but um, yeah. So so and this there's no magic to it, and it's really super easy. There there's several ways that a person who can't see anything can still tell color, and this is actually I, I work with museums all over the country, and I've done this with thousands of people, and where I'll take sighted people that have no orientation mobility training, no special training for visual impairment. And mm -hmm. in five or 10 minutes, they're able to tell colors, but with a blindfold on. And so, you know, it's, so imagine a person with a visual impairment that has actually had some sort of training and, you know, and it works on this. But the idea though, is I just make each color feel different. So with paint, um, just to break paint down really easily, it's color and then it's sticky stuff. That's not going to let it fall off a canvas. So in the, in the sticky stuff is called a medium. And most paint feels kind of the same. Like if you're using acrylic paint, they all feel pretty similar. Mm -hmm. But there's different things you can mix into the paint. So like I can mix this. Like this stuff is really thick. Hope I picked the right one. Oh gosh, it smells terrible. I don't know why I smelled it. <laughs> don't 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 smell your paints, guys. No, that would be another really way thick. to know your paints. You can know yeah, your really, paint I know. smells. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't that be great if I put an actual nice smell? You could in there. do That's... that. That's another option. You know, I've done that. I do workshops with, with children who have uh, autism and adults with Alzheimer's and yeah. I'll mix different smells into the paints. And, you know, children with autism, that actually, it's a huge thing. It's, it's funny. I don't know they why. They like it, it or they don't like it. They love it. Oh my goodness. Yeah. They, um, I mean, I'm not saying every child with autism will love it, but, but, um, but quite a few, I mean, like it's, it's a little startling, but like I can mix a medium and say into my white paint and with the mediums, you can change the way they feel. So I can make the white paint feel like toothpaste. Then I can take a different medium and mix it with my black paint and I can make it runny and feel like oil. So, you know, you've got this really thick toothpaste sort of paint. You've got this runny, oily paint. You know, one, you know, you know, the thick's got to be white. You're not going to confuse the two. So there's just, you know, you, so you can do that with all your paints. And it actually helps you to be able to mix the colors because um, if I mix for a, a, um, a texture that's halfway between that white and black, then I also have a color that's halfway between that white and black. I get a gray mm -hmm. right between. And you have 200 touch receptors on the pad of each finger. And your your sense of touch is really good at being able to tell um, the viscosity of something, the looseness of it. And it's just like anything. The more you do it, the better you are. Like, I know when I first started re learning how to read Braille, I thought, this is impossible. Like, nobody can learn how to read Braille. Like, all everything feels like the letter A. It's just like one big bump. And But after a while, you get better. Or like if you're learning how to play guitar, you know, and someone is, you know, sighted and they're learning to play guitar and they're always looking at their fingers. You know, and after a while, you get better at it, and you can just feel your way around. So the same way with here. So, so do you you see the picture in your mind, and you just know where all the color, and you have felt like where all the you've where all the colors are, and you and envision this in your mind. Yeah, and you know, if, here's the weird thing: I got really interested in perception because I was wondering, you know, as, a, as visually impaired people, how to, how how can we make art? How can we do art? And it turns out it's really not very much different than the way a sighted person does because we're using the same parts of our brain. Um, mm -hmm. Now, if you're sighted and you have a dream, you know, that dream seems real. Like you have a dream. You're like, oh, my goodness, I feel like I was there. I was seeing these people and all this. And it was like you're actually there. Right. And that's because you're using the same centers of your brain to dream as you do when you imagine, as, as you do when you're seeing. Your brain's like a computer. It doesn't care where this information's coming from. It just treats mm -hmm. it as information. And really all your eyes are doing is that the light hits your eyes and it's turning into an electrical chemical sort of reaction that goes to your brain and then your brain will take it. And that same dream part of your brain that's in your imagination is activated and it puts the image together, which is why even people are excited, you know, like you always hear these stories of like a bank robbery going down and there's four people that see it, that everybody has a wildly different description of the bank robber, yeah. you know, and, and it's because everybody's living in a dream world basically. So all, everything that I paint is coming from my mind, just the same the way that it did when I was sighted. It's just now I use memory and I also use my sense of touch. So there's ways to be oh, able to touch so, persons. So you're, so you paint, so you're painting like from your memory or, and your ideas. And, so, you're, and, and, you're, so you have something envisioned in your head before you paint it. Oh, I do. I do. I always do the painting first in my mind before I start. Oh, but if it's like okay. if a person, let's say if I was doing a portrait oh, of you. Say. I, I would, there's ways to fill your face, like to be able to understand what you look like and to be able to take that and then turn that into a painting. But it's the same way that a sighted person does. Cause even though a sighted person is looking at someone while they're doing a, a portrait, 
Mm -hmm. the image that they're putting down is in, it's in their head. It's in their mind. So it's funny. Like we think about sight being perception or, or vision, but the actual perception of vision is always in someone's mind. It doesn't matter if you have 20, 20 vision. It doesn't matter if you have no vision, you know, your because, imagination. Like, I don't, I don't plan my, I don't, many times I don't plan what I'm going to, what I'm going to create. And mm -hmm. so, so I'm not going to, so, you, but you wouldn't work that way. You, you always would know what you're painting ahead of time. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> that's, you know, that's one of the wonderful things about art is that, you know, I've never met two creatives, two, two artists that did things exactly the same way. And I have friends who are sighted artists that do it just like you say, it's all impromptu. And sometimes mm -hmm. it might not even be about what you see, but it could be movement or feeling and emotion. And they, and you ask them, what are you going to paint? And they're like, We'll find out. We'll find out at the same time. And there's nothing wrong with that. And it's nothing, you know, it's just brilliant. That's, you know, that's, yes. that's a great way to do it. It's like um, po 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 poetry. There's sometimes where somebody will work hours on a line. Other times where people will just riff and they're going off and it, it's impromptu and it's wonderful. So is, is texture and movement important in your art or is, is mainly color important or is also texture and movement? You know, whenever um, the, the lines are really important for me, whenever I first started painting, I thought it was um, whenever I first started, this was 20 years ago and there weren't really blind painters. Like there might've been somebody in Turkey and someone else. I didn't know about them. And, you know, this is, this is a while ago. And, you know, it, you know we're so in the information age, it's hard to think 20 years ago what things were like, oh, Yeah, <laughs> but it's in, and, you know, I noticed that whenever I lost my eyesight, a lot of times people don't they don't know what, you know, like they don't know how much you understand about what's going on around you. And, you know, especially from TVs and movies, if that's all you know about blindness, then, you know, you'll see somebody in a movie, an actor, and they'll go blind and their mother will enter the room and they'll go and they won't know who it is. Oh, Mom, is that you? And you're like, oh, my goodness, come on. You've known this person your entire life. You know, you've you've lost your eyesight. You haven't been hit, hit in the head or anything, you know, you you know. So but I wanted people to know that I was still me in here. I was still John. So. Um, so the paintings that I wanted to do were realistic. Like I wanted, I wanted to be able to touch something or understand something and be able to put it on a canvas and have people look at it and say, well, you know what? He really does understand what's going on. Um, so, so the lines became really important and the texture was important so I could touch and feel it and I could make it, but, but the lines and all were important, but you know, there's something though that was different whenever I was sighted, if I did a portrait of a person and if it looked like the person, I would think, oh, that's a good drawing. And, um, but then after I lost my eyesight, I became more interested in perception and, you know, like how, how somebody could walk into the room, let's say in a room full of sighted people and everybody sees the same person, like the same hair, the same clothes, all this, but everybody else has a different idea about that person, you know? So like, you know, what they're like, if they, if they're friendly, if they want to be their friend, if they don't, you know, all the, all these different things. So the perception is different. So as a person who is visually impaired, when I'm working on art, it's the perception of that. I think that's so interesting. And that's where the color comes in. And, you know, so you're actually putting in your emotion, your ideas, your feeling. And um, and when I hear music, I see color. I have synesthesia. So I usually try to right. pick music that makes me feel the same way. And, um, you know, so so I try to wrap all that together in a nice little bow and, <laughs> and have a painting at the end of it. Do you ever ask for feedback? Because I myself, um, I, I, I consider myself low vision. I'm I'm on the, on the other end of like, I'm on the end of low vision as opposed to as I'm closer to 2200 vision than I am for a total blindness. And so mm -hmm. even though I can see mostly what I'm, what I'm creating, I still ask, like, I still will ask my husband, no, like, can you see the, do you, what do you see that? What do you mm -hmm. see when you see this? Or what do you, do you, can you see this thing that I'm like painting or like that? So I don't know. Do you, do you ask for feedback from other people? I, I do more now. I didn't at first. So I, um, um, at first I didn't so much. In fact, I didn't tell people when I first started, I thought I was nuts because I didn't know of any blind painters. And, and I thought, mm -hmm. well, I'm crazy now. <laughs> so I'm doing this. And, but I just needed it because I was so angry and depressed and art had always been my way of dealing with, with bad things. And, and so I never thought anybody would see a painting of mine. It wasn't even an idea. So it was just cathartic. It was just my way of doing it. So it didn't really matter what other people thought about it. But, yeah. but more and more though, it, it, it I, I, I will ask people, especially my wife, my wife is brilliant. And mm -hmm. um, so I'll do a painting and I'll say, um, and I won't tell her like, you know, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? I'll just say, I'll, th I'll think in the painting, I think, you know, I think this part is kind of, it's weak for some reason or not good, or this part's good. I'll just hear what she has to say. But I will say though, um, 
no matter what your creativity is, if it's painting or writing, sculpture, um, you have to be careful when you ask people what 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 you think about your art because yeah. they could like it or they could hate it, but either either can be bad. So so it's nice I to know. I know you're yourself. supposed to be like you're supposed to be strong in what you think. Like like you're saying it, it should be more like about more be strong in what you think about your own well, art. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's always interesting to take in that information. It's always great to get somebody's insight, but to know, like, well, that's just their insight because if they really, really like what you did, maybe they're wrong. Maybe maybe if you'd worked a little harder, you would have been able to take it even further, you know. But but they you, they said, oh, I love that. You're you're you know, you're right. I am a genius. This is brilliant. <laughs> and you stop working on that, and you don't improve it anymore on that part. And or if they hate it, and maybe they just don't know where you're headed with it, or what 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 you have in yeah. your mind and. You know, so then you think, well, man, I'm just going to scrap no, this and I'm going to. I don't uh, always take what they say literally. I, 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 I'm, if I agree with it, like sometimes I don't agree with somebody with mm -hmm. what someone thinks. And then I'm like, no, I totally don't agree with that. So I'm not going to change that or I'm going to keep it the way it is because I really don't. But then other times I'm like, well, I think, you know, I think, okay, but, well, maybe I do agree with them. So <laughs> other times I might be like, no, I, I definitely know I don't agree with that. So I'm not going to change it or I will do that mm -hmm. thing. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's hard. You know, it really helps, though, to be able to talk to other artists and to get yeah, nice I think feedback is critiques. helpful because mm -hmm. it, it can even it can even get you thinking in different directions. Yeah. And, and I have to tell you, you, you know, you get enough feedback and after a while. It doesn't hurt your feelings anymore. And I mean, like I, I'm like, well, usually <laughs> I still, I'll still be like, oh, man, <laughs> if my wife will come in or somebody or if I do a show and somebody's like, you know, like. Actually, you know what? You know what I found to be true is that if somebody hates something, I like that. Or if they love it, I like that. But if it's sort of like, eh, you know, like, I'll uh, take it away. You hate, you hate like, it oh. if it just go, uh, uh. Yeah, yeah. Like you want emotion. You know, it's your art. You want to, you know, you want to instill some emotion. But, but, you know, it's all a learning thing. So even if, you know, it's the best part about art that for me is the failure. I make so many mistakes all the time. And every time I make a mistake, I'm learning something. So, yeah. It's hard to get too down because I'm, you know, it's like even when I'm failing, I'm still going forward, you know? So, yeah, as long I, as you it, have that positive attitude, because because yeah, if you have, if true. you make mistakes, if so making mistakes can also, if you make a lot of mistakes, then you might, you could even have a, a negative attitude where, oh no, I just keep making so many mistakes. But if you say, but if you mm -hmm. have the attitude that, no, I'm going to keep, I can keep learning from this. So. Yeah, I Man, I, I have a I have a thing over on the side of my studio. It's called the Rack of Shame. And it's all these different can can canvases that just did not work out. And they're you know, but, but I've learned so much. Like each one, there's a lesson there. And um, I had a German TV crew in a, a week ago or two weeks ago, and I made the mistake of saying the Rack of Shame. And then of course we spent about two hours going through with them saying, "What's wrong with this one? What's wrong with this one?" And me me going like, "Oh my gosh, you know this is you know, I, I, it's it's all it's all, all these terrible mistakes that I've made, but." It's incredible though, because they didn't you know, see the mistakes. Is that right? They didn't see your mistakes. Oh, they saw them. <laughs> yeah. other, but that's okay. I create something, and I'm like, oh no, the eyes are too big on that, and I ended up selling <laughs> that one because the person said they loved the way the eyes were, and I was a, well, and if I hadn't had that for sale, I was about to like fix the eyes, but mm -hmm. he saw it and he said, in fact, it was Paul, Paul, who's my co-host. He said, no, I like the eyes, and I'm like, oh, I was gonna, I really, I thought I should have fixed those <laughs> eyes, and he's like, no, that's why I liked it because I think that's a lot of times with artists, you. I don't, people say, oh, you should, you shouldn't stop an art until you love what you've done. And I'm like, no, for me, it's like, <laughs> I did the best that I could with what I knew in that situation. And with everything that I have, it was the best I could do. I wish I could have done better, but I can't, I'm at a stopping point right now. I can come back to this. Maybe I'll come back to it. Or maybe I, I could still show this, or I might not show this, or I might do more work on it and I'm going to step away from it or, and then sometimes I say, Oh, I really like all this and this, but then I don't like this part, but I don't know how to fix it. And I, I find that a lot just happens. I can never create something where, Oh, I just love everything about it. And, and it's only, it's only occasionally like that. <laughs> Diana. Yeah, that's so true. You know, I've heard that the worst person to ask about art is the artists themselves <laughs> about their own art, because either they, either they love it too much or the, or they, or they hate it too much. And um, so, so that's always usually the word, whether it's writing or anything, painting, it doesn't matter, but, um, yeah, that's, you know, mm -hmm. and one thing I've noticed too, is that creatives are usually some of the most, the nicest people that you will ever meet 
They're so nice to everybody, but they can be so mean to themselves and they're so hard on themselves. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, and so, you know, that's, that's, that's something that's worth remembering sometimes. And here's Paul. Uh, oh, Hey Paul. Hello everybody. Hello everybody Hi. in chat. Sorry. Hey. I'm late. Oh, okay. No well, problem. And welcome. Welcome. <laughs> we're, well, we're, me, uh, we're, we're, we're having a good time. Let's, oh, um, thank I, you for, we just, for joining we had us. Just, yeah. Paul, we had just talked about like, well, mm -hmm. it, um, it was from um, a health situation that created his blindness um, in his in his mid twenties from epileptic complications. Yeah, I heard a little bit of. Oh, yeah, in his mid twenties, and then and then uh, we didn't get into his thirties or forties or yet because um, I was asking him all these questions about how he. Um, because color is a big thing in his art, and he and he is totally blind. But color is a big part of his art. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, 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 if I may, Diana, I don't know if you have a structured uh, list. Oh but... no, go, go ahead because I want to read the chat, I'm, and then okay. I'll get some. I'll see if people have questions. Okay, go ahead. That's awesome. You, you. Um, sorry, I'm late, and you're doing an awesome job, Diana. Thank I'll, you. <laughs> you can take a little break, um, John. Mm -hmm. welcome man uh thank you thank it's you a, it's an honor and a pleasure for you to be here oh um, oh thank th th thank you paul I, I feel the same way this is what yeah. what, what you guys are doing is awesome having a place, yeah. a place for um, us to come to and, and absolutely chat. absolutely and i understand that you've had done interviews with maybe cbs i thought so i i saw in google or something that you you have a c uh something from cbs i think you were interviewed Oh yeah, actually, yeah, we, I mean, I, I it's, it's funny. It's hard to, uh, yeah, we've, uh, we've, um, have interviews for, um, from everybody pretty much. We've, um, I, that sounds, sounds weird, but I've been doing it for like 20 years. So it's, um, yes, yes. Um, so, so, so I, I, I know that sounds, that sounds like I have a huge ego and I don't mean to, but no, 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 it sound no, like that, no. but it's, so um, it's an honor yeah, because I mean, this is a big BBC deal all over for, for but you it's to just, come here. It's just cause I've been doing it so long. It's, you know, it's, yeah. it's the weird you're, you're a blind what? You know, you know, something. Yes, people. yes, yes. Well, it's crazy. I mean, this is what it's all about. This chat is about empathy uh, for people that are struggling. It is, it is also for educational purposes for the sighted. Um, being that Diana and I, and uh, from what I gather from your story, uh, you were sighted at one time too. So now you've been on both sides of the fence. And um, uh, I feel that my blindness happened to me uh, for a reason, and, uh, and that is just to teach. And 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 um, uh, to 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 bridge the gap between the sighted and the non-sighted. Um, we are all the same. We're not anything different. We just have a disability. Blindness doesn't define us, or at least doesn't define me. Um, so, uh, any stories that you, you know, that we experience in our lives, uh, we need to share because, and knowledge is key. And so many people in my life since I've become blind have inspired me, and just to move on, I'm, I'm actually a more well-rounded person individually uh, through through the grace of of just everyone um, everyone's love, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and art is love, and uh, it's an expression of who you are. And I think it's just truly amazing that you take this situation where you, you know, it's devastating. Um, you know, you go through the stages, it's almost like a death. Uh, at least it was for me. I thought my life was over and, um, I would just like to, uh, pick your brain a little bit on, I know you talked a little bit about how it happened, but how did you transgress from, from normal vision to, to, to where you are today and what you're doing as an individual for, for the community and just in life in general. Oh man. Um, you know, whenever the, the eyesight first went, I, 
I, I honestly, I thought everything was over. Like I thought I, I was a student at the university of North, North, North Texas and I was enrolled with the office of disability there, which is so thank goodness for that because I have, I have a, epilepsy. So yeah. I was already enrolled with, with there, but in, in the, the seizures were happening and all this other stuff was going on with my health. And, and, and I thought I had to leave. And, and then, you know, the, got word that what it was causing my vision to go. And so I went by the offset disability basically to say goodbye, you know, like, mm-hmm. well, I got to go. And like, this is, you know, it sucks. And yeah. Um, and they were like, no, you don't have to go anywhere. Like that, like what, what, what we have today, like the accommodations, the technology, the, all this sort of stuff that you have, you, you can be whatever you want. And, and the, the director, the guy that, were, that was talking to me, his name was Ron, Ron Venable. And I really liked him. He was such a nice guy. And I thought, I thought Ron was so nice to, to just, just light lie to me that way you know because I, I thought he was just trying to make to make me feel better and i mean i i just had no hope but i was fortunate in that at the time this was like 20 years ago but at the time in, in texas um it was set up so that if you're in college um they want you to stay in college so so i was able to, to keep going to my classes mm-hmm. and and i had I had a braille instructor that was sent to me i had an orientation and mobility instructor for white cane all this stuff that was provided and um, so that I could still keep going to and stay enrolled. And um, and I mean, I, I was getting completes in my classes because I couldn't read or write anymore. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. and, yeah. I, and I have a dark sense of humor and uh, but I was I was an English major. So I was going to English, you know, I was, I was func- functionally illiterate there for a while. I was going to English classes where um, but the upside is I didn't have homework. You know, I didn't I had to throw for a while. I had to make everything up eventually. But yes, um, but at the time, though, I I. I was so angry and I was so depressed. Yeah. I, I didn't, I didn't even, re- even realize how angry I was. Like I, I, you know, and, and, and as a child, I was in and out of hospitals a lot with the different health issues that I had. Mm-hmm. And, and so I'd been to, you know, I'd had depression and all that. And, but this was just on a whole different level. And I'd always had art in the past to be able to deal with, with the way I felt, you know, and, and even though like I had I literally drew every day when I was sighted, it was just my thing. I just drew every day. It was just, ever since I was really little, I think I could draw before I could walk. And I just kept taking classes and reading books and stuff. But, but when the vision went, it didn't even occur to me that maybe I could draw again. It wasn't even a thought. I just thought I'd lost everything. That, that was just one of the many things I had lost. And it wasn't until a year later and that I, I, I'd been learning or, orientation mobility, you know, we learned how to use a white cane. Yes. And I could travel independently. I could leave. I live, I live pretty close to the campus, real close. But after a year, I could leave my apartment and find the, you, the campus by myself. And yep. baby and, steps. Um, yes. Oh my goodness. And I would still be sweating like crazy because you're yep. trying to cross the roads and you're, you're listening for engine sounds and all this stuff. And you're, you're like, this, this is so crazy. And, but you just, anyway, <laughs> I'll get there and I'd still be sweating bullets, but I could do yep. it. Yep. And, um, and I thought, well, goodness, if, if I can cross the city and not knock over too many people, you know, I, I would, you know, I, with a cane, you knock over some people, especially on a college campus, lots of, lot, lot, lots of people running around, but, but not yeah. get hit by a car or do anything like that. You know, surely you could get across a canvas using the same techniques. You know, it's much that's simpler. Very it's much smaller. No, that's so very I start, well, so I, I just started using orientation and mo- mo- mobility techniques on my drawing. Wow. Be- you know, because if you can feel a sidewalk with your cane, you can feel yes. the cracks, you know, with a roller, you can feel how smooth it is, how rough, yep. every yep. crack, you know, where, where the grass stops, all this sort of stuff. And yes. then, so on my canvases, I just started drawing with lines and it treated it just like it was a wall that I was trailing or, or a sidewalk I was following. And then when I sighted, I could do um, like a blueprint of a house, very detailed sort of stuff. I could do a portrait of a person. And now I was, I was relearning, like my brain still knew how to draw and my hands knew it, but yes. that connection was lost. But fortunately with the O&M, the new techniques, you know, I mean, the whole idea of O&M is being able to touch and understand the visual world around you. So being able to apply that to the drawing and, you know, it was very, very slow, but that's okay. You know, it's okay that if, you know, it doesn't matter how long it takes you to do your art or whatever. And so I would draw a square and I would try to make another square, half the size of that square and try to make it perfect feeling it and thinking about it and just do tons of these things just all the, all the time. I was just, like I said, I didn't have homework there for a good while. So I would go to school and then I would, I would make sure that I would be around friends or family or somebody every day because I knew from being a kid, 
being depressed, you have to have other people around. It's so easy to shut yeah. yourself out. Yes. So I would make sure I would go to a coffee shop. I would do something that's right near my apartment. Um, I had to, especially if I didn't want to, then I really had to, you know, and then I would go home and I would literally draw 12, 16 hours a day, seven days a week or more. And I would sleep about four hours and I'd go to school and I'd go make sure to be around somebody. I didn't have anything else going on. And at first yeah. I didn't tell people that I was trying to draw because this is 20 years ago. And the idea of a blind painter was crazy. And yeah. I thought I was crazy. I thought I was nuts. And then, um, I mean, I didn't tell anybody until, um, I had a little white dog and I started painting with, with oil paint and I didn't realize how hard it is to get oil paint off your hands. So I would wash my hands and then I would, my little white dog would come over. I go like, Oh, you're so cute. I love you. And I'd pet her. And my friends would come over and I was like, what happened to Ann? She's like purple and green and blue. And I go like, oh, uh, like, oh man, I, I don't know. She gets into things, I guess. <laughs> Crazy yeah, little dog. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then, wow. of course, they found out that I was painting. And then um, eventually um, I wanted to meet other artists. I didn't think anybody would ever want to see a painting of mine. That wasn't even a thought. Like I was doing it so that it, I could deal with the anger. I could deal with all the stuff I was going with. I just wanted to meet other people that were also just obsessed with art, interested in art. So, so that's, that's how I did my first shows. And I didn't tell people I was blind. Um, I, we would hang the paintings. I'd go away. Then I'd come back and I'd eavesdrop like with my, with, with a, especially my best friend who's, who's now my wife, but we would go back and I would eavesdrop just to hear what, what, what people were talking about the paintings or anything. Right. And um, you know, like, Oh, do they hate it? Do they like it? You know, or and hearing um, what artists would have to say about it, just trying to learn. Then some stories got written about them. Um, when it turned out that when people found out I was blind, there were some stories that were that went in the news. And then some um, some nonprofits and charities heard about that. And they were like, hey, can you come and and and, and do a workshop or, or talk to our client? So yes. I started traveling all over doing that just because wow. I was still so angry and still so depressed. But I noticed that whenever I would go, whether it was a, a group of, of people with visual impairments, if it's soldiers mm. with PTSD or if it was children with autism, or, or adults with Alzheimer's, like we all got each other. Like we, even though maybe what we're dealing with was different, we were all dealing with something. And it was just yes. like, it, it was like, it was just special. Like I, it was the first time since losing my eyesight. It's like, I could take a deep breath and wow. I, it was just, it was the best thing. And then, and I stopped hiding so much that I was visually impaired. I didn't, you know, I would, you know, I would talk about it more. And yes, and that led to museums hearing about it because museums want to be more inclusive. So I started working with museums. And then, um, and I've worked with museums all over the country, the, the Guggenheim, wow. the Met, the um, dozens of museums where we make art more accessible. And we started that about 15 years ago and started, you know, started the first things where we would have recreations and a lot of stuff that you just find in, in museums today. And um, so that, yeah, that's where it started. But I can't say that I was smart and that I thought, oh my goodness, this is really going to help. But I will say one thing. Um because I was using the O&M techniques, the cane techniques in my painting, every time that I paint, I'm practicing my O&M. I'm practicing my ability to touch something and understand where it is and relate it spatially to other things. And I've taught this to hundreds and hundreds of visually impaired people how to paint. And we're actually teaching it in seven different states here in the States. Um, it, it's schools for the blind. So yes. children are starting to learn how to paint, but they're I've never met a, a child who was visually impaired that liked the cane. Everybody hates the cane at first because it's easier to take somebody's elbow, but you can trick the kids <laughs> into learning all the O and M skills by teaching them art, how, how to do paint painting. So yeah. Just painting, you do it reverse. Like you took O and M to, to continue on with your painting. Mm -hmm. When you teach these kids how to paint, now you can say, well, now you can use the cane. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? It works. I mean, it makes sense when you think about it. And I wish I could say that I thought of it, but I thought I was out of my mind when I was starting everything. You're not but out it just of your makes mind. Sense. You're, you're a genius, basically. No, I mean, I'm uh, lucky. I was lucky know, the people I had around me, to be completely honest, because yeah. most people who lose their eyesight don't have a support group that I had there at the university yes. and with my family and my friends. Nobody made, I mean, I gave up on myself. I literally, like, I, I thought this is it. I had no hope. Yes. And other people believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. And yes, thank yeah. God for that. And that, that's what, why we're here on this earth. I believe we we exist on this planet simply to help each other. Life, is hard, enough, life is hard enough. And we all have different journeys and different stories. And, 
if you're if you're willing to share and and be passionate about it and compassionate, uh, you you know, you, you stick around, you can learn something as a person, you know. Yeah. Uh, and you grow with that. So I would say that you've been truly blessed, uh, John. Man, I, 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 I agree. I mean, I'm fortunate that I'm doing something that I love. I've been a professional artist since college and, and I, I, I've been, I love it. Um, you know, it, it went from me thinking I was crazy to no one ever seeing a painting. And, um, since then I, I become the world's first blind mur- muralist. I've done murals all over. Wow. Um, um, two years ago I was made a, a, cult, a, a cultural ambassador for the United States where, where the old, you know, which when I started, I thought I was crazy being an artist who was blind and then, to, you know, for the United States to say, hey, you're an artist, you know, it, 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 whether or not you're blind doesn't matter. We want you to go to other other places and and talk about culture and talk about art, you know, for, and which I thought was really, really cool. And, you know, it's just it's I think I think I think we're right on the cusp of something that's huge, because I know yes. when I was first painting, there weren't that many visually impaired painters. And now there's hundreds and it's growing and it's growing. And eventually you know, the idea of a visually impaired person painting isn't even going to be, you know, it, it's going to be normal. And, and the technology that we have, all the stuff that we have that's out there, you know, the visual impairment, the, the ideas that we used to have for it are completely outdated, you know, and it's just going to keep changing. And, you know, the, the ideas of what my, my grandparents had of, of a person with a disability is different than the way my, what my parents have, what I have, my son, mm-hmm. his view is goodness. His view is just like, hey, it doesn't matter your your disability. You can do whatever you want. You know, it just means you do it in a different way. You know, and I was like, yes, son, yes. <laughs> yeah, you, you find you find your way. I have a question for Paul. Oh, uh, <clears throat> my girlfriend Lisa has a question. Yes, dear. Hi, Lisa. How did he meet his wife, and does she travel with him when he goes on his adventures? Okay. Oh. Uh, how did you meet your wife, and does she travel with you on your adventures? Well, you know, I. I met my wife um, in college. She um, actually, she, she was just out of college and I was still in um, the whole losing the eyesight thing made me spend a lot longer in college than when I had initially planned. Right, <laughs> so right. I was in there quite a while and making up in, incomplete, but I, but I was invited to a party that my wife was throwing by, by a, f- a friend that we both had, but my friend invited me to meet this other girl that was there. And when I was there, my wife, well, my friend there, or the, the but yeah, the person who's to become my wife, she was just such an incredibly nice, sweet, amazing, funny person. She was just so nice to everyone. I thought if I could be a friend to someone like that, then that would say a lot of good things about me. You know, some people yeah. would think like, oh, he's not all bad. I mean, look, he's got a friend like this. <laughs> so, so we so we started hanging out and stuff. And she she was also in art. She's in she was into photography, but and she never painted. But the, there's like this one three month period in her life where she painted. And it was right then. So, so, so she, she took me back to like her, her like studio. She turned a bedroom into a studio and she was doing all this really thick art. So I was able to feel it and touch it. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just incredible. And, and so, so not only was she just amazing person that was so kind and sweet and funny, but you know, she was doing this art that I could touch and feel. (laughs) And so, you know, it's like, ah, and um, so, yeah, so we started dating about two weeks later and then um, and we've been together 18 years. We've been married for, for, for 14 now. Oh, congratulations. That's uh, and, oh, and, well, thank you. I, I, you know, it's funny. I, um, um, we've worked, she, she was, she was a director at the university for a long time, but about five years ago she left. And then we do art together full time where she runs the business and, um, which is brilliant, you know, which we wondered, is that going to be crazy? Cause you know, you know, we're married and all that, but we both agree that she's the boss. So it's worked out <laughs> really well. <laughs> but but when we travel, I I, I use a guide dog. Um, I have a, gu- a guide dog named Eagle, and she's one of the. There's two different ways of tra- training guide dogs. Like there's an old way that uses just routes, and there's a new way that uses fines. And and, and my guide dogs I get from the from the guide dogs of, of Texas. And they use fines, which is amazing. So a lot of times it's just me and my guide dog. Like if we're going, we, I, I travel to give a lot of talks and stuff. Mm-hmm. So um, I work with a lot of different charities and nonprofits where I'll do like a, a painting that we'll auction off and try to raise money. And so I do wow. a lot of travel and, um, and um, a lot of times it's just me and my guide dog, but, um, but it's way more fun if my wife can come too. So especially yeah. if we're doing workshops, yes. um, I, I teach tons of workshops. The workshops are always free. Um, so if I'm, you know, if I'm doing a show somewhere, if I'm doing a, a talk somewhere, 
if there's a chance to do a workshop, you know, with a, with a, a group, you know, lighthouse for the blind or a children's hospital or something, we'll go in and we'll do workshops and those are always free, but, um, but it helps to have another pair of hands. <laughs> so she'll yes. come in. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Wow. So uh, how much traveling have you done? Would you say? Um, well, before COVID, I, I would usually be flying about two, two, two or three times a month. And then we would do about the same amount of car trips. And then, um, since COVID a whole lot less, but it's weird though, because, um, I thought, I, I thought, I thought everything would just sort of like dry up. And I thought, well, you know, I'll get a lot of work done in the studio, um, which I have, which is nice, but a lot more zoom calls and stuff, you know? So it's so much easier to drop into a, a classroom somewhere. Mm-hmm. When you, there's no travel involved or anything, yes. so so I, I can go talk to a school or I can drop into like an art class in Wisconsin. You know, hi hi Miss Miss Weber's class, you know, or this yeah. or that, and just give a talk or or you know or maybe it's an art group for visually impaired people, you know, somewhere. And it's like you know it's it's a small group, but it's Zoom, so you know it doesn't matter. It's it's easy peasy, and so I've been doing a lot of that. Wow, wow. but it's starting to pick back up again. And um, we've I've gone to film something in, in um, somewhere and then some other things, but yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been, it's starting to ease back up a little bit. So that's nice. Actually. Okay. And that's get out and meet people. basically in the United States or have you traveled other countries? Um, we've traveled. Let's see. I, I, I went to Brazil. Um, I, I painted a seven thirty seven for Delta. Oh and, my goodness. Um, <laughs> and they, they wanted me to to promote like it's the rock and Rio concert so it's the biggest concert on earth it's like a million people attend the the, the concert and they wanted to paint a 737 to help promote it and all so they were like hey come do this so I went to Brazil to do that and and uh, my mom was able to go with me which is brilliant um I can't use a guide dog when I go overseas um so I went over there and I did that and then I went back as an ambassador for the US um, for a cultural ambassador with my wife. And we traveled around and we're able to do some different things um, at some universities and school for the blind. And um, we've been to Holland. I got to meet the prime minister there and, and we, we did a thing. And then Japan and the, the artwork's gone to over 120 countries. But I um, I um, unfortunately, they don't let me go everywhere the art goes. <laughs> I, have to, I don't get to go everywhere. I wish I did. That would be amazing. But yes, um, but but the really cool thing, though, is that. The internet goes everywhere. So, so I get emails from people all over the world that might have a, a, a child who is visually impaired and the parents are like, oh my gosh, you know, um, they just want information or this or that, or, or, or people with visual impairment. And um, it's just, it's just wonderful how much, how the internet spreads. So like what, what you guys are doing with this is going out everywhere, you know, and and I can't tell you how many times I've heard somebody say, oh, you know, I saw I saw a video on YouTube or I saw something, uh, this or that. And it's just getting the word out there that just because you have a visual impairment, it doesn't mean that that you can't do things. It doesn't mean that, you know, um, I have a friend, Eric. Um, he's the first blind person that, that climbed Everest. Um, I, have, I have, you know, I have another friend, that, um, I'm Jer- Jer- Jeremy. He's the number one blind golfer in the world. You know, it's just there's there's all these people that are doing incredible things. And blind golfing. Now there's something. Wow. Oh, yeah, I, asked, I, I asked him. Yeah, I know. Because I thought I said, you know, I know everybody asks you this. Like, how do you do it? We we, we were on a game show. Um, we were filming in L.A. doing a game show thing. And because we were both on there, it was like it was like, you know, like like, would you believe it if or something kind of thing. And I can't remember. My brain's terrible with titles. But we were both there and I, I, I told him, I said, you know, um, I know I know that everybody asks you this, but how do you do it? Like, how do, how do you like golf courses are huge? <laughs> like, how do you, you know, at least with a painting, you can fill around, even if it's a mural. You know, there's ways to be able to kind of break it down into small little things. Like I've done some few four story murals, but you just break it down to little little bits, you know, I yeah, mean, but uh, yeah. golf cars, of course. But he said, you know, you, you you first get the lay of it. Like, so you know where it is. You can walk around it if you need to and all this. But you know, like, oh, well, it's, the green is at this angle. So you drive it and all that. And then when you get to the green, um, you can walk around the green. You can feel the green. You feel if there's any divots or the lay of it and all this. And then yeah. someone can have a pole over by the where the hole is with a bell. So you know where that is. And and he's amazing. And he's also super, super nice. And um, But he's on Instagram. But, but it, yeah, if you look up number one blind golfer, you'll see him. And um, everybody should follow him because he, he's yeah, a really, absolutely. really funny, fun guy. <laughs> I mean, uh, one thing I've learned, um, 
about my disability is uh, strength and tenacity. Um, you know, uh, you know, like when you were feeling depressed and 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 feeling like you wanted to give up, and then you just get that fire underneath you and say, "Well, I'm done with this. What do I do next?" You know, you and then you get you you start surrounding yourself with people that are, uh, uh, you know, positive, forward going people, and uh, you know it just blends, and then the rest is history. You know, you just yeah you you carry on. You got to move forward. I believe that the strongest people on this planet are people with disabilities, because simply because they've had those challenges. And, and met those challenges and accept those challenges every day and, and, and are grateful and just keep moving forward. Uh, I'm not taking away anything from the sighted people that do wonderful things in this world, but I'm telling you right now, simply because they didn't have the challenge, they don't really know. And it's not their fault. It's just you know, it's like like running a marathon. You just don't run a marathon. You have to train for it. You have to 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 prepare yourself mentally and physically. And if without doing those things, you won't run that marathon. So, in order to get the strength and perseverance of of roadblocks in your life, uh, especially uh, physical roadblocks, roadblocks, um, it it just makes you stronger. Uh, if you can imagine, John, with all the strength and tenacity and things that you have learned up to date, if you were to have 2020 vision, I would venture to guess that you could rule the world. I no, mean, we, you know um, what I mean? Because you would just you would take that strength and tenacity within mm -hmm. you. And now simple daily tasks with 2020 vision like everybody else. You have that extra strength. You you know, you would just keep going. You probably wouldn't even stop. Man, you know, Paul, I I, I love everything you just said. <laughs> That's all wonderful. It's you know, and, and it's true. I think like with, with, with employers, um, a lot of times like in, in in the past, they've been hesitant to hire somebody with a disability. And I think that's completely wrong. I mean, if if you wanna if you want an employee that that has has already had some problems, like you, you know, somebody that that, that knows how to deal with it with a tough situation. You know, if you're hiring somebody with a disability and they can do exactly what the person that without a disability can do, you're automatically getting somebody that, that, that can yep. deal with when, when things go wrong or, or things are tough, yep. the person with a disability is just going to laugh, you know, like, Oh, you know, I've, I've, I think I've seen worse. And it's a very to, strong characteristic. Yeah, it is. It is. And it's, 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 a, it's really important to get out there. I am. Um, I was in Florida last month and I think last month I'm terrible with time. Um, but I was I was doing a live painting um, with, with Man, Man, Mandy Harvey. She's a she, she's a singer who's deaf, but she's completely deaf. She uh, she plays the uh, she, she's on America's Got Talent, mm -hmm. and she's this beautiful beautiful singer. But the whole thing was to, was to was to try to encourage employers to 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 hire people with disabilities because yes, it's just it's an untapped market. It's just ridiculous that you get all these people that that have incredible skills and especially, you know, with, with technology, everything, the way it is now, I mean, the idea of, of a visual, I mean, it's, it's just, it's an outdated idea that a person with a disability can't, I don't know. It's, it's just silly. It's silly. But so, so more people need to know it's actually a huge benefit to hire somebody with a disability. I mean, it's, you know, it, it makes your organization mm -hmm. stronger. Absolutely. Absolutely. How are we doing in the chat, Diana? Oh, no, no questions. Unless I ask people to, maybe if I ask people, if they have questions, but I was wondering, I live in the, I live in the suburbs of a city that supposedly has the most murals in the, in the city in Philadelphia, it supposedly has the most murals. Have you heard that? No, no, really. Ooh, that's, yeah. Well, that's, uh, maybe that's, maybe it's that's an old <laughs> fact. Maybe they're, maybe they're not, don't make, they used to a few years ago and maybe now maybe that changed, but th th at one time they were the city that had the most murals. That's cool. No, you know, I've, well, I was I've wondering never been if you there ever, either. If you had ever come to Philadelphia to do many murals? No, no, I sure haven't. I would love to, though. I mean, I would love to. Oh, yeah, they have a special. They have a special program. The mural painting, whatever. They have a special department for it. Wow, that's cool. well. Maybe maybe you can contact them, Diana, and then try to uh, send send uh, send it to John. Oh, okay. Um, 
maybe they'll work something out with John. I, I know there's a town in northern Illinois, not too far from me, that's also called the City of Murals. Ooh. And it's it's a lot smaller town. It's not the size of Philadelphia. It's it's about 20,000, 24,000 people in that town. But they, they all have um, murals on all the buildings downtown. Oh, that's cool. And, and I think they usually put a new one up somewhere every once or twice at, uh, every couple of years or so. So maybe I should try to reach out to the city there and see um, uh, if they might be interested in uh, maybe doing some kind of news thing and and uh, and you know uh, make it a make it a, a some kind of a, of a, of an event, some charity event or something. That 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 sounds like fun. Yeah, yeah. Man. Awesome. Um, so what, what are your current plans right now, John? You know, I'm, I'm doing a most, most, the most of the work that I do is in the studio. So um, I just, I paint every day. Um, I was painting just before we were chatting and, um, and then I'll be painting tonight. And, um, but, and so just a lot of painting, most, most of what I do is commission work and, um, which is mm -hmm. fun. And then and I try to paint for shows and things like that, but, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's funny, like now I know I'm really happy and, you know, and, 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 you know, and I seem like a really happy person is because I am, <laughs> but, but I have to think really art for that. Well, in my family and all, but, yes, but, yeah. um, but you know, art, art is still, I still paint, I still paint for the exact same reasons now that I did 20 years ago. And the really cool thing about art too, is that I get the same benefit now that I did 20 years ago. Hopefully my, like when I first started painting, I could only use two or three colors. Everything is extremely geometric. Like there was no blending shadows and shading anything in the very beginning when I started after losing my eyesight. So I, I'm able to do a lot more now, but the benefit that I get from it is exactly the same, you know? And yes. And you know, I, I, I'm thinking about the paint on the end of the brush. I'm not worried about anything I've lost. I'm not worried about, I'm not stressed about the future. It's like, I'm taking a little mini, mini vacation. So I, I still paint really long hours and, but it doesn't feel like work or anything. You know, I feel like I'm on this little mini vacation where I'm not, I don't, I don't have to worry about any problems or anything. And even if a painting doesn't work out, that's okay. It'll go on my, on, on my rock of shame over there with the other paintings that didn't work out, <laughs> but, but, but I still get the benefit from it. I still get to feel good from doing it. Even if the finished thing didn't work out, I'll just try it again. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll you know, I'll give it another go and, you know, and, and then maybe that'll work out or I'll white it out. And, you know, and every painting, there's a million problems with every painting and there's a million failures. But, you know, you know, it's funny, like um, working with the different museums, I've been able to um, to talk to some people who know a lot more about art than I do. And it's interesting, like some people that, are, that have x-rayed like Monet's paintings and stuff. And and they'll say, like, you, you can see the drawings that he did before he did the painting. And it looks like 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 maybe a fourth grader did it. You know, they're just scribbled and there's all these mistakes and it's just yeah. scribble trees here and there, you know, and, and it doesn't matter all the mistakes that you have, all the failures you have, as long as you keep plugging away, you know, and then finally you get it to where you want it, you know, and I don't know. It's, it's one of the things I love about art is it doesn't matter how long you do it. You can always keep improving. You can always keep learning. Yeah. Well, I understand that. Yeah. You started out just learning like three colors and now you have progressed I remember watching one of your live streams. Uh, maybe you want to tell them a little bit about your channel and when you started it and what do you do on the channel? Oh, sure. And um, yeah, my live streams are very embarrassing. Um, <laughs> they're not, they're, they're not, they're not that fancy at all, but we just chat and, um, but we really, especially during COVID, we, we started, we started really getting into it because, you know, you can't see anybody. So it was like, you know, being able to get on there and chat, but um, yeah, but we just get on there, and I'm usually painting. I'm usually working on something, and yeah, we'll chat. Yeah. We'll, we'll we'll maybe give, give give away some art, some prints, and stuff. And mm -hmm. usually every Tuesday at eight, we'll we'll, we'll do a live stream. And um, this next week we won't be able to, but um, we may do it on Monday because my wife is going to visit a friend. So mm -hmm. yeah, uh, I remember catching one of the live streams. Uh, I believe it was the one where you were working on a. a it was a very simple flower with a stem and some petals uh, on the top Ooh. of the stem. 
And I remember that they were kind of like the, the outline of the flower was kind of raised so you could feel everything. And it was uh, something I think you use in your uh, in your workshops. And I remember your wife uh, had to be blindfolded and she had to try to paint it. Oh, my goodness. That one. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I remember that. Um, it's yeah, been a while. Actually... I think it's been over a year. But uh, I remember oh. that. And I learned something about that stream that because uh, I'm like, how do you how do you identify the different colors? So you guys use different types of sand and mix it with the paint so you can feel the texture of the paint. Um different different kind of some sand more coarse some more fine uh and then also you've gotten to the point that you could actually tell the difference by just holding the paintbrush in your hand and the paint on the brush your your sensitivity is so finite that now that you've you've trained your brain to know uh what color you have on that brush just by simply holding the brush in your hand yeah, a little, you know, um, yeah, that, that, that was a workshop where that we, we do for museums and we'll use sand and stuff for that workshop. Um, and that Diana and I, uh, we, we, we talked a little bit before you came on about um, the way that I mix colors now, but I have different mediums, but the sand is really nice. So for workshops that I do with other people, um, I'll use sand and flour and stuff because I, that, yeah, that flour way, was the other one. Yeah. Yeah. Cause in the studio, like for my paintings, I usually use, I just use mediums like paint painting mediums, but but I'm always worried because those have chemicals in it. Like if I'm going to do a big workshop, then I always mm -hmm. use stuff like sand because no one is going allergic to sand. So, um, so I use that. But mm -hmm. there's other things like here. Let's see. Let me see if I can drag this over. Sorry. Uh, this is like a four foot canvas. I don't know how much of it I can get over. But this I just started working on um, last night. So these black lines, they're not really raised. So this, this is a whole different way that to draw. Okay. So the black lines I have on here, they're not raised, but they do feel different. So it's a different medium I can mix in with the paint that makes it feel it's kind of a tacky sort of feeling. So okay. it almost feels like like a rubber cement, but it's sort of a tacky. And then the 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 canvas is a real rough canvas. So so you had to slick. So you know there's just different. I'm gonna push this back because I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll into it. I know I will. <laughs> <laughs> but um but that's that's one of the neat things about it is that there's there there's several different ways that you can tell color. Like one is through different textures you can mix in with the paint. Another, it's just like a recipe system, like knowing, well, two parts of this, three parts of that will always make a certain color, you know? So, so you right. can measure it out and you can do it like that. And um, okay, I see. And then you place it proportionally where you know where all the colors are left to right. Yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, and it's like at first when I, when I was first started painting, um, I never knew how much paint was on my brush. But after a while, you start to be able to get, you know, you, you can feel when the, when the paint's off the brush because the, the brush acts different. You know, it's like, when it's the the brush has got a lot of paint on it, it flows, and then it gets start it starts to drag, you know. So, yeah, because I do it every day and so much, you know, it's easy for me to like, oh, you know, I don't, I don't. You know, it's kind of like if you're sighted and you learn how to drive. When you see somebody learning how to drive, they're thinking about everything, like like where their hands are on the wheel, and you yes. know, and their their feet, or is it on the, you know, everything? Or they're looking at the mirrors, they're looking at everything. After a while, the last thing that that's going through their mind is is how to drive. You know, they're they're they're, they're chatting with someone who's sitting next to them, or they're changing the station on the radio, and yeah. they're able to do all this other stuff just on autopilot. And it's funny, art's the same way. You know, like at first, I had to really concentrate about the paint on the end of my brush. After a while, after you do it a few thousand times, it's like okay, you know, my hand knows what that feels like. I don't have to think about that anymore. And you start thinking about the next thing, and it's just baby steps. But the wonderful thing is, is that there's always something there to, to, to think about. There's always something to, to keep you involved and, you know, you know, it's, it's never boring. Wow. That's just, that's just amazing. Now, can, can you describe or show how you would typically paint? I mean, you feel with one hand, you, you try to find a certain spot and then you pinpoint with your other hand to, line up with the brush is that how how it's done yeah here let me get this back uh, here we go let me get this other one so if the wherever sighted there's there's a visual behind me it's a paint it's a landscape painting it's four feet by three feet or maybe it's five feet by four feet i can't remember i'm terrible with numbers but it's a large canvas when i first started i was terrible with proportions so i couldn't paint on a canvas that was already stretched like this like the kind you would find at an art store mm -hmm. um i had to take raw canvas and staple it to a wall 
because when I tried to draw something, I would try to make it small and it would turn out being really big. So okay. that I would never know how big a drawing was going to be until I was done. And then, okay. and then I would cut the canvas out. But after a while, you get better with it. So you know proportions and you get better. You know, it's like everything. So yeah. but the way I always start it is for me, because when I was sighted, I did illustration, drafting. Um, so drawing just makes sense to my brain. So it's a way for me to be able to start to start breaking up a canvas. So with this, it's a landscape and it's mountains in the background. So okay. I started with a horizontal line kind of going across the canvas to, yep. of, to make in the, the mountains. So I can feel that. The first, the first line is always the hardest. So the easiest thing to do, a lot of people say, oh, I don't know where to start. Just start anywhere. Because <laughs> once you make that first line, um, you'll probably hate it. That's great. You don't hate it all day long. That's great. You know, but, but it lets you decide where the next line needs to go. So you just start doing that, you know, and even if, you know, it doesn't. So on this, there's tons of different mistakes. I have some horses that are in here. Um, this horse does not have an eye. <laughs> no, it did, but the eye got really terrible, so I had to, bl had to block it out. So it's just like one mistake after another. But, yeah. you know, you just keep kind of kind of fixing it and you're kind of working on it. So with me, um, I start with the drawing, and then and then I start um, with a really old painting technique where I block in the colors. So, you know, so if you've ever if, – if you're sighted or if you've ever seen um, um, Bob, Bob, Bob Ross – he does mm -hmm. a wet on wet, you know, it's all a prima sort of, it's a um, one stroke paint kind of painting. Yeah. Um, most painters don't paint that way. That's a really great way to paint. That's awesome. That's fun. There's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's There's really, a lot of blending too. There is. That's a, it's yeah. hard for me. I need to touch to feel. So having an entire canvas full of wet paint is a very messy pro proposition for me. So, yeah. so that doesn't work very well. So for me, I do, I do a lot of lines, but I'll start blocking in a, a painting. So I'll know like up here, I'm starting to block in the sky. So I'm putting some blue in and it feels different where the blue is. So this feels different than over here. And um, so I'm using it just to sort of get the idea of the basic shapes. So I'm using different colors with a medium that I can touch and feel. And then, and so I'm just starting to block it all in like uh, up here on this, um, this hill. Um, I have, I have, um, I'm, I have a little grass green and a darker green that's going in here, but it has a different, texture in it than than the than the just the canvas and the other so it doesn't have to be perfect no one's going to see the, that color it's going to be covered up with other paint but it's a way for me to start building the painting up so the more that i put on there that i can touch and feel the more there is for me to understand it's like using a cane on a sidewalk if you're walking down the sidewalk and you and you, you come across a fire hydrant no one's going to move that that fire hydrant so the next day you come come down that sidewalk and you find that fire fire hydrant you know exactly where you are then you find a tree. Well, you know how far you've gone from that fire hydrant to a tree. Yep. You find the corner. There's only one place for those two streets cross in the city. So you know where you are in the entire city. Same on here. So if I'm feeling this and I, I can feel the hill, no one's going to come in and move the hill on me. <laughs> you know, I can feel this line. Yep. I'll be like, okay, I know what I was thinking. Now, this is kind of complex, this painting, to be honest. It's like six horses. There's a guy on the, on the, on the, that's going to be on the, the hill back there. Um, but when I first started, um, oh, there's a painting behind me. Let me get this out of the way. I don't know if you can see it or not, or if whoever's visually. Yeah, we would like to maybe uh, show some of your uh, uh, finished paintings or uh, yeah, some I mean, of your work, if if you don't mind. I don't know what I have here. Um, you know what? I remember. I, I remember seeing. I think you were working on a lion at one point. Oh yeah. Yeah, it sure uh, did. That, that was about a year ago too, and that was just an amazing painting. Oh well, well thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Now, most of the artwork that I have is in here. Um, I have some hanging on the wall, um, but I have one um, that um, behind me that that's probably from like ten years ago, and it's a, it's a yellow and brown, but it's a it's as much de detail as I could get into a painting then. So there's no shading, there's no blending. Um, there's just, there's maybe four or five colors and I couldn't even do the whole face. So it's just the guy's eye, eye and a nose. And then, and then, um, and then here I've, I have a painting that I, I've just finished. I think I'm finished. I don't know. Maybe it's not, but here, let me get it. Okay. Aha. Okay. So let me, sorry. Aha. Let me try to get back here with that without knocking anything over. Um, do, do, do. Okay, so this I don't know I don't know about holding this up for the camera. Like, um, you want to put them on full screen, Diana? Oh, okay, all right, just a minute. We're gonna put you on full screen there, John. Ooh, we're getting fancy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Well, here, you don't, let, me, let me. You don't need to see my ugly mug. No, you. Well, here, I, I can. I'm not sure which way to go. I, I'm well, trying you to think. Look like you're okay. It, it, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, good. Yeah. I think so, you're okay in the camera there. We're just so you, you probably can't tell with, with, with my webcam. Um, there, there is a lot of text texture in this painting, okay. but it's of a, a it's of a man, and either he's lifting a woman up, um, and so so he's lifting. So it's like two dancers, like he's lifting her up into the air, or it could be that she's she's descending down and he's catching her. Okay. But I wanted this to be sort of um, it's a it's the idea of like whenever I lost my eyesight, everybody around me was they they were helping me so much, and then then later on whenever I was able to I, I adjusted. You know, I'm able to go do the workshops and things. Um, I don't know. You know, you're able to be on the other side. I'm not sure which is more helpful or which is more beneficial. Like, you know, getting the help, you know, or or or, or being able to give it because they, you know, it's both. They're both rewarding. You know, and I learned so much from from both. But with this, the the lady she has her arms outstretched. There's lots and lots of color. Um, I listen to music when I paint. So and around my studio, it's set up. It's like like the setup for a small club. <laughs> I like to have lots of sound and the sound makes color. And, um, but this is almost like, um, I have, I have textured paint up around the, around her arms where she's sort of dissolving into it or either that, or it's going the other way. And she's like coming from the white into form, but right. then it's almost like angel wings. And then down here, the, the, the man down here holding her up has a lot of texture, but it's really rough. It's spiky. Um, it's kind of a rough kind of, kind of texture. Um, there's a heavy illustrative quality to it. Now, whenever whenever I first started, oh, and his face is very um, rough, so there's no detail to his face. It's just blocky kind of color, really rough. Where hers, her her face is more refined, you know. So, wow, you know, it's, it's beautiful. Oh well, well, thank you. I, it's um, you know, I don't know if I'm done with it or not, but you know, it's kind of you know, it's one of the fun. Well, things. it's That's like you were saying earlier. You know, you 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 get other people's uh, perspective, but you have to be careful. Yeah, yeah, and you know, and because and you know also, what I mean, beauty is in the eye, but you, the beholder, you know. You yeah, know, I would imagine that pile that you got of you know those rock paintings that you just tossed to the site. I bet you, I bet you, there's somebody that will pay some good money for them. Oh my word, I don't know. I don't. Well, I'll tell You'd you what. Surprised? I mean, you know. <laughs> well, if, if you're if you're ever in the Dallas area or you're ever down here, come on, come on by, and um, you're welcome. You're welcome to um to to peruse the rack of shame. <laughs> okay, the rack of shame. That's right. I said rock. I don't know why I was thinking. Oh, that. oh, oh! Yeah. I, I knew what you meant. I didn't even. Yeah, yeah it's funny. I, I I didn't even think about it. That's funny. <laughs> awesome. Very. Well, good. I have a question about when when mixing colors. Well, did you wait? Well, you said something about you don't mix colors, but about like so you so like say blue has a certain texture. Will have a certain texture, but. So what about different shades of blue? Like, I guess you would know light blue because it would feel more liquidy or something. Yeah, well, um, um, when I first started, I didn't, I, I wouldn't like blend colors together. But over time, I figured out ways. But mm -hmm. one of the great things about about painting too is that, you know, let's say with blue, there 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 might be a million different shades of blue, but in in a particular painting, you might only be working with three of them. So out of the million, you don't really need to worry about the million. You just need a way yeah. to be able to handle the three. So, so I would mix like the lightest blue, you know, might, might, might be really thick. The, the darkest blue might be really thin. And then, then there's a blue somewhere in between those two. So as long as I can keep those three consistent, yeah. then I'm good. I'm going with that painting and, and you just do that for every color. So, you know, it's very simplistic and you could also do a recipe way, you know, we'll like a one, one part blue to 10 parts white. It's going to be really light, you know, nine part blue to one part white. That's going to be really dark blue, you know? So you, but if you know that, you know, it's it's kind of like um, if you have a recipe for a cake, you know, you put everything together. You might not end up with a great cake every time, but you're not going to end up with scrambled eggs or anything. So it's going to be some kind of cake. So there's ways to just keep track of color. And and, um, and also sometimes I'll have, I'll have multiple palettes. So um, I may have a red palette and a blue palette and that just keeps things from running together. I don't always need that or if it's really runny paint, though, um, I, I've learned. That I've, you know, I've I've come up with some accidental purples, and accidental greens from from paints just running together. So you know, you gotta, you know, you you so you, after, you can keep everything the, separate. Mm -hmm. After Wait, the paintings, uh, well, uh, while you're working on the painting and it's dried, you're on, like, and you're still working on it, but part, maybe a few days later and it's dried, then you go back. 
you just have it the picture in your head of like where things are because then by that time the paint's dried and then you wouldn't know what color it is yeah well i i i do i do painting in steps so so in my mind um before i ever before i ever start a painting um and it's easier now than when i first started but i always work work out the painting in my head it always changes like you always make changes but 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 because i have to wait for parts to dry i'll work on one part of the painting while another part is drying so I have different steps. I know, well, for this one part, this one session, I want to get this part done. So, so I'll do that. And then I, then I know the next time that I come back, I know exactly where, whether it's in a minute or after that's dry, or if it's the next day, I'll know, oh, I'm on, I'm on to the next step. I can feel it. I go like, okay, I did that. I did the blocking in. So now, so now I can start refining. Then I can, oh, I refined it. Now, now, now mm -hmm. I start putting the black lines, in. you know, so I have this step. And the one nice thing about that though, I have to say is that it really helps with artist block. Because there's so many times where you're there like, oh, I want to paint or I want to create something. I don't know what to do. Well, one, one nice little tip is, is, to, is, to, is to never finish something on, on the same day. Like always leave something left to do. So, so the next time when you come into the studio, you instantly can start working. So, so, that, so that you can finish that one part. And then when you're done with it, your creative juices are going. You're already flowing. Yeah. You're doing things. Them. And then you can start a new one. You don't finish that. You leave at least one little bit undone. Um, so anyway, that, that, that kind of helps. The worst part is just sitting there thinking like, what now? <laughs> yeah. What should I do now? Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. And I, you know, I venture a guess too. I mean, some artists, they, uh, when they're painting, um, especially sighted artists, um, they, sometimes they overdo too much. Mm. Um, yeah. I, they, they say you got to learn to just walk away and take a break. Because, you know, sometimes you you tend to overwork things. So I would venture to guess that your art, in a way, because of your disability, you probably don't come across that too much. Not, you know, you know, hmm, not not too much. Although if a painting stays around my house too long or around the studio, um, <laughs> I might I might I might I might have to throw it back on the easel every once in a while. <laughs> Because I'll start thinking, I'll start thinking about it, and I'll start feeling, and I think like, I wonder what that would be like blue. <laughs> I think, well, maybe, maybe I should make this blue, but, but no, I don't. I, I usually leave it when, once it's done, and then, yeah, but, yeah. Every once in a while, um, you know, you gotta, you know, so I'll, I won't say never, but, but yeah, yeah. I, I usually, I yeah. usually get it to a point, and I, and I just, just what you said, Paul, where it's like there's a point where you think, well, if I keep it, if I keep working on this, I'm gonna overwork it, and I'm, I'm gonna start, and I'm gonna start taking taking away from this painting right. you know instead of adding to it you're gonna you know and so whenever i get there i think whoa you know stop 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 at least at least stop for a while yeah you know and then yeah. and then just you know and then work on something else and you can come back to it and then with a fresh mind you know when you're a little bit um you know when when it's not i don't i don't know like you know when you get so close to a painting sometimes it's hard for you to edit it and to edit it and, and judge it and all you know you know so I, you cool you off know, a little bit you come back and look at it and go like ah, okay yeah I, you know, I would venture to guess, too, that sometimes sight is good, but sometimes it can be your enemy. Yeah, yeah. In a I way. I think you're right. You know? Yeah, you um, know, it's funny. I, I do a lot of talking with, at colleges, and I'll, I'll go into art classes, and I'll teach an art class, or I'll give a lecture. And um, and it's funny. Um, out of all the all the schools I've gone to, um, most, most, of the university will, you know, most of the universities will have a drawing lab, like a drawing class. And they have they have all these statues and everything in it, um, you know they're like Greek statues and they're like formed certain ways and all this, and every one of them that I've gone into the the, the statues always have a light co covering of dust on them, and that I think is fascinating because they have hundreds and hundreds of students every semester coming through and, and and they're going in there and they're drawing it, and all these artists are supposed to be these out of the box sort of thinkers, but none of them go up and actually touch the statues. None of them use their other senses. I mean, we have all these senses that we know the world by, but when you're sighted, you tend to just rely on your sight and you give up on everything else. Yeah. You know, and you don't even, you don't even think yeah. about it. And yeah. That's, yeah, that's my point. I think like, for example, when I, when I, when I went legally blind, um, I went totally blind for, for about eight weeks and some vision came back, but it's, there's so much damage especially to the optic nerve, um, I ended up, um, uh, you know, being, uh, I have, um, I have glaucoma and, um, uh, I ended up, uh, 
having some routine surgery for glaucoma and my eye collapsed. Oh and, man. And, and Henry. Yeah. And I was already blind in the left eye as a child. Uh, but the right eye, you know, I was functional all the way up to 53. And um, then I had some routine surgery to, to keep the eye pressure down. And, the, you know, like every surgery, there's always risks. And uh, this, unfortunately, uh, my eye ended up collapsing and my eye filled with blood. And I just saw total darkness for eight weeks. My so, goodness. Uh, so some of that vision came back, but it's uh, just like very narrow tunnel vision. That that had to be a very scary eight eight, eight weeks. Oh my yeah. goodness! Yeah, yeah. And so I thought I would never see the light of the day, and now I forget what my point was. What I was supposed to. There was a reason why I brought it up. But anyway, you sound you sound you sound, you sound like me. I I, I, mean, I won't forget what I'm saying. <laughs> I just I don't. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. When, when when I had the darkness, I noticed that my hearing improved oh. and my smell improved and my touch improved. And it, it wasn't like, you know, people say, oh, when people are blind, they got, you know, super hearing or, you know, these superpowers. It It's not. It's just that your brain now is processing. When I say that sometimes sight is your worst enemy is because when you have sight, it's overpowering your other senses. And, mm -hmm. and when, when that sight is gone, you're in like panic mode for your body, mm -hmm. fight or flight. And your body is now, your brain is tuning into all your other senses and they're just heightened. It's not like you've got, you know, all of a sudden this super hearing. It's just that you don't have the distraction of the sight in the way. So now you can really focus on hearing and, and smell and, and, and touch. So um, I, I, you know, when, like you were saying, sometimes, you, you know, you need, because, because these painters could see, they, they missed out on touching those statues. You know, there, there's other avenues to, to paint a picture in your brain uh, yeah. without sight. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 so true. You know, and you just you know, it, it's funny in a museum, it almost seems it almost seems like 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 you're walking into a church. You know, where it's so quiet and and, and you don't you know, um, in a lot of places like you don't touch anything. There's no sound. There's there's not much going on. It just feels like like almost almost like almost like you could be in a church or a lab or something, you know, mm -hmm. where, mm -hmm. you know, and instead of this being the expression of human emotion and ideas and, you know, the best, you know, it's it's different because it's so on. It's just focused on sight and they forget that every other place in the world, you're using all of your senses. You know, you walk you walk into a restaurant, and, you know, the first thing that you notice is the smell, you know, and you know, like, oh, is that fresh bread breaking? Oh my gosh, is this, you know, this or that? And, and, um, you know, and then you hear the music and all this and, you know, you don't, you know, if you're sighted, you don't even see the food until like a long time later, you know, until it's put mm -hmm. in front of you, you know, so in, your, in your art, yeah. in your art, do you, do you try to incorporate smell and sounds? It, yeah. And for sound, for sure. I do a lot of sound paintings and, um, um, and I've worked, I've worked with a lot of different musicians and stuff too, where I'll, I'll take their, their, their sound and then I'll put it into the artwork. And, um, but also just every, like if I, you know, um, I do a lot of commission work where, um, let's, let's say if a wife wants a painting, she said, you know, I want a painting of Paris, but like when I met my husband and the feeling that I had, you know, it's hard to explain that feeling, Yeah. but you know, yeah. I mean, you know, so, but I can say, Hey, is there a song? that makes you feel that way. You know, yeah. is there, is there a band or something that you love that whenever you hear that, you think, Oh my gosh, it's our song. I'm back there. I'm in that moment. Mm -hmm. And they can tell me and I can listen to the music. And then I, I then I, I see color with the music and then the feeling of it all, but it is able to, to put you into the painting a little bit better. And so using that um, I've done like paintings like Hershey where like I'll, um, which is fun because you get to eat a lot of Hershey bars, um, <laughs> you know, try, try to get the flavors and put it in the painting or I've done paintings like for perfume, you know, where, you know, it's the smells and stuff. I mean, you know, there's, there's lots of different things And with the museums that I work with. Um, we started, we started about 15 years ago, but doing these different um, kind of workshops where you can paint, but we'll go through the galleries and we'll check out art and we'll have people describe art and all this. 
And we'll actually bring like, like let's say like if we're looking at a landscape painting, I may bring in some scents of like grass. If there's like horses, like a saddle, I might, I might have a leather smell. If there's a dress with it's like a silk dress, I'll have a swatch of, of silk. All these different things for people to feel and touch and just lots of different things. And it may seem like, you know, and, and this is for sighted people and not sighted people. It's for everybody. We started it for just for people with disabilities, but we were having so much fun that um, 90% yeah. of the people who signed up for it didn't have a disability. And they just saw us laughing and have a good time. Yeah. So, um, but it's weird to think, you know, like everybody knows what grass smells like. So if you're talking about art with a with grass in it, what I mean, since we know what it's like, why does that help? But it lights up so many more areas of the brain. If you're talking about the art, if you can feel the painting or, or you're descri describing it while, mm -hmm. while, while you're tasting, you know, the, mm -hmm. the beverage that might be in the painting or you're smelling something or hearing music. And when, one museum, we were talking about a painting that um, had a, it was of a Pope. And so I had somebody dress up like a Pope and they weren't the Pope, but you could still ask him questions. And he would try to answer, which was hilarious, but, but, you know, it was just fun. It was just different. And it makes it, you know, you, you get more senses. There was one where somebody, it was like um, a couple that was doing a tango. So I had a couple of dancers come in and they, they would tango and they, you could hear them dancing, you know, and, and hear the music and, and all this sort of stuff. It just makes it more visceral. You know, it makes the painting yeah, absolutely being dead on a wall. Did it's, you say you incorporate that? I mean, you have incorporated that in some shows that after it was for accessibility or for, for people with disabilities, you actually incorporated that in other shows? Yeah, yeah. Like in museums and, and tours and stuff. Um, um, we had, um, there was one museum thing where I was I was going in to do a talk and um, it was about Italian art. So so we had Bellinis brought in <laughs> so everybody could drink Bellinis while they're looking at the, the Italian art. And we had like a nice. little, some, some kind of food to eat, but you could taste something from the country that, that, that you're, you're talking about. And, you know, and so, I mean, it's not something you can do every time, but whenever you can do it though, you're never going to forget that artwork. You know, you're never going to forget that painting and it's just anything to make it special. But what's oh, that interesting would be great is for that teaching art for teaching art for kids. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I taught, yes, I, I taught yes. art, I taught um, art full time at the elementary school level for 25 years. And that, that would, that would be a really good lesson. I mean, oh my goodness! Just an art event that combined with a lesson. Well, kudos to you! I have so much respect for for our our art, art teachers. That's just brilliant, and it's so important. Thank I mean, you. it's it's one of the few things that a kid can come up with an idea and design how to do it and be able to carry it out and finish a project. How many other ways does a kid have that much power and that much control in their life? You know, it's you know, it's so cool. Hmm. Thanks, thanks so much for teaching, man. That, that's. Diana, that's that's awesome. <laughs> that I mean, the way you paint, I would I would venture to guess that that you could categorize that as soul painting. Ooh, I like it. <laughs> that, I like, you know, I like that a lot. You're, you're taking in all your senses and just tapping into your soul and expressing it. Well, I'm sure trying. You know, um, Hemingway said about his writing. He said every day that he wrote, he was just trying to write one one true sentence. And I, I and I was thinking with painting, like all I ever wanted to do with the painting is to try to do a true painting where what you're feeling and what you're thinking is there on the canvas. And when someone sees it, that's what they feel and that's what they think. And um, and I've never done that, I don't think. You know, maybe you're successful in little ways and here, but it's a wonderful, you know, it's a wonderful idea to try to live up to, to try to work towards because it might it might be impossible, but you know. Got to aim high. What? You mean <laughs> so that it wouldn't even be open to interpretation anymore? It would be like what you thought and what you conveyed on the canvas, that would be exactly what they thought when they saw wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be cool <laughs> if, if everybody saw no, it? No, like, that's not art. <laughs> <laughs> so it's impossible. No. It, if, if, if I did do it, it then it wouldn't be art anymore. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying illustration is an art, but that like to, that's like illustrating. That's like il illustrating something like like say story illustration that would be illustrating a story that's actually written and you're illustrating what's going on in the story and then oh, that way the people say yes i see that's that's illustrating what's the word what they're saying in the words and, and there's no there, no ambigu ambiguity about it that's interesting that's yeah i see what you're saying yeah that's interesting i i was thinking like i um i got an email from a gentleman in ethiopia once and and where he was emailing from they didn't have roads but they had, e but they had internet. <laughs> so, and he had seen like a picture, like a story that had been written in the paper or something. And, um, and like, and in the story, there was a painting of mine, like hanging behind me, I guess in it. 
And he wrote, wrote in the email, it had to be tra translated in, into English, but he wrote everything that I was thinking about or felt whenever I, I did that painting. And it was like, it was, it was like, it was like, he could have been in the studio standing right behind me. Wow. And I just mm. thought, my goodness, like, you really, and it's not, it's not that him. I'm that good of a painter. Yeah. It's just this guy was just a really, really good at understanding art or something but but well, that's you, I just, don't know, that, you just touched his soul well, you, he just you really did. related to you like somebody else might they might have a different angle on it but yeah, they might yeah. think something different but and so that's what i like about art is that people can mm -hmm. have different interpretations and that's see a, different that's things so in it I, I love it when somebody looks at a painting that you've done or and and they see something completely different than what you were thinking and yeah. they're like oh it's this and that you're like, like Really? Wow, that's fascinating. I love that. That's, that's interesting. That's not what I was going for, but you know. But I really think that a painting, and maybe you know, it's it's only half done by the artist. It's like you know, it's 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 like a story that that someone tells, yeah. and it's not finished until someone hears the story. So you know, whenever you know somebody looks at the painting or touches the painting or understands it, that's 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 when the actual painting is completed. You know, and it's yes. completed in yeah. their mind. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yes. you know, so I can only ever do half a painting. <laughs> Even at my best. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, it, it's a pretty, it's, it, 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 it's that's pretty deep, you know. I mean, a lot of a lot of painters say, "I'm done, it's complete." Well, not really, because it hasn't, is it hasn't, uh, you know, been recognized or somebody, you know, it, it, you know, as soon as it touches somebody's heart, that's when it completes the painting. Yeah, and that and that the truth. And then I've heard that you can finish a painting so much that it just is, then it's dead. You can and it's not alive anymore. You've you've just worked on it so much and 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 that you worked on it so much to try to finish it that you killed it. It's dead. It's a dead painting. And I've <laughs> also heard that there's no painting ever finished. You've just decided to stop working on it at that point. Like you really you've taken it to where you want to take it. And then many times you look at it a year later and like, oh yeah, I want to add this to it. I want to do this to it. So mm -hmm. There's there's some famous artist I don't know who it is but that says that no the art their art is never done they just choose to stop working on it at a certain point. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, incidentally, uh, Lisa in the chat, uh, my girlfriend, she she was commenting. It's been a while. The the painting with the dancer. Uh, oh yes. That uh, Lisa's an artist too. She's been drawing ever since she was three i think she, oh, she's great. she's an amazing artist and she she really likes the color choices thank you thank you very that much you I, really I, nailed I on the, you really nailed it for the color oh well thanks 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 so much lisa i i i appreciate that let's see does the chat have any questions anybody in the chat okay we're opening it up to anybody any questions for john Uh, this is simulcasting to my face, one of my art Facebook groups, and my personal Facebook page, and here. So we we had a few people over there on your Facebook. Yeah, I wish I wish I wish my guide dog was in here. I'd, I'd introduce you to to her, but oh, that um, Lisa was just asking about that just now, this very oh, second. Yeah. She's uh, ask him if we can see his dog. <laughs> oh yeah, you know, you know, I close I close the door because um my son he's he's learning how to play the trumpet. <laughs> he's okay. in there, so he was doing that. So I closed the door. Yeah. But she's always by. She's always right, right, right next to me. But um, but she was in there when I closed the door. So. And but, you said uh, she, her name is Eagle. Yes. Yes. Oh, what a awesome name! I mean, I love eagles. Anything to do with eagles. Oh, brilliant! I yeah, you know, and with the guide dog, you don't get to name them. So yeah, I, that's, you, you, you never know what yeah, it's going to be. Absolutely. Um, you mentioned that when you travel, like to Brazil or these other countries, you couldn't take her with you. Why was that? Um. Well. It, it, it depends on it. Well, like, like with Brazil, it was a really long flight. So it'd have been hard for her, but, um, but also it, it depends on, on the country. Like there, there's sometimes when you're bringing a dog over uh, there, uh, even if it's a guide dog, they, they, they have to be quarantined for a while. Oh, so, really? Oh. Yeah. So, so sometimes it's hard. Like, and whenever I would like, I went to Japan and my mom went with me to Japan because my wife couldn't go. And, um, and she went with me to Brazil once because my wife couldn't go, but we had the best time, you know, it was a brilliant 
Um, dogs are better guiders than humans, I think. <laughs> They're better at it because, you know, like like with Eagle, the only thing she ever, she ever think, thinks about is guiding. Like she just, you know, she's just always there. She's always happy. She's always ready to go. And, um, but, you know, but it's nice though. It's like, you know, being able to travel, like being able to go to Brazil with my mom or Japan and was brilliant because, you know, we would never, we, we've never been on a trip like that before. And, you know, so it's, it's awfully, you know, it's interesting. Uh, we, it makes it we have a, a question from the chat from an artist, Amanda Trout. She says, really interesting to hear about your process. What keeps you inspired? Oh, Amanda, thanks. That's a great question. Um, you know, I, I, I try to paint from things that are going on around me. Um, so, so most, most of the people in my paintings are, are, are pe pe people that I meet. They're like friends. Um, they're, you know, they, uh, so a lot of my friends end up in my paintings for, for better or worse for them. So you never know. Um, but, but also music and things that are going on. Um, you know, just if something is interesting, I usually try to paint it. Like, um, I, I know, I know a lot of artists will just paint one thing, but I, like I paint landscapes, I paint portraits, I do, I paint a lot of dogs. Um, I love dogs. Um, I paint a lot of cats. I found I'm allergic to cats, so I can't be around cats anymore. Um, I, I, my neighbors have cats, which I'll talk to, which they're, they'll, they'll come over just for me to talk to, which they love because I'm not going to pet them, so they, they like that. And But, um, you know, just anything that's interesting. Um, do you paint music? Yes. So you do you paint abstract paintings, like about music or your feelings? No, you don't. Not not too much abstract. Um, a lot of my paintings are, are very abstract, but there's usually some lines to help to help to help guide a, a narrative for it. So, um, um, so like, I don't know. It just it just depends on the on the on the painting. Um, I did some paintings for for like for for different musicians, like um, where it's a little more abstract, but there's still I don't know sort still kind of realism in it, but. Not too much, but the colors are abstract because I usually use the music is, is for for the color. Oh, so, so if you if you painted about music, you would include the instruments, but then the colors would be the colors that you see. Well, like let me see, like like if I did a um if, if I did a, a a painting of of a jazz musician, like let's say like there's a there's a jazz musician who's really great. His name is Stockton. So I might fill his face, and then I might do a portrait. Let's say. Like he, maybe he's going to have it on a CD cover or something. So I'll fill his face and I'll, and I'll, and I'll have that, but then I'll take the music and I'll use that for all the color in the painting. So you can see him, you know, or, or, um, um, or I did a painting for Jeff, Jeff Bridges where he, he, he's also a musician and he does a lot of um, music work. So I was doing some paintings for him where it was like his, his music. So it was more abstract, but then I'll take something that I'll actually paint. So maybe it's like a guitar that, they actually use, you know, and I'll, you know, I'll use that guitar, but then the colors though will be in it, you know? So hmm. there's something usually, I don't know. I, I love, I love abstract painting and my colors are abstract, but I, I usually like to um, have it. I don't know. It has some sort of realism to it. Like the guides, a story, a narrative, you know, to it. Even if it's just a little bit. <laughs> hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. But, but that's, but that's fun. I don't know. That's, that's, but I do. I do abstract every once in a while, but you know, I, I don't know. Um, I'm like, I mean, kind of like, you know, Diana, like you were saying that like, you didn't like to, to, to think out a painting beforehand. Yeah. And um, you know, and then there's, you know, like with me, I do I, sometimes I, some, I work to, I work different ways. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, abstract, me, I, abstract is, is more difficult than you think. I mean, I used to think, oh, it's just throwing stuff on the painting. And then I get in trouble with Diana because she's like, oh, no, no, it's not. And she knows yeah. all because you know, she has two masters. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you know, so, that's, so yeah, she's exactly. got something to say. And I'm like, okay. And I think you did a live stream once, Diana, kind of showing. Oh, yeah. That was a while. That was more than a year ago. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, the colors, they're, they're – they're, there's a certain way to do things to make that whatever mess look good. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, you know, it's funny. Like I, I don't paint an abstract, but some of my favorite painters are abstract. <laughs> like, like, yeah. like Roth, Roth, Rothko. I like, I really like him. And I, that, that's just like a color field painting. But I mean, but I have lots of friends that are abstract painters too. And, and, mm -hmm. you know, that I really love, but you know, but there's also, I, I have painters I admire that do like hyper, hyper realism. 
that I don't do yeah. either. Like, you know, that's not, that's not my bag either, but I admire people that do. It and I think, Oh, that's brilliant. And it's great to see someone who's really good at these different forms of art for mine. I don't know. I use abstract color, but it's, it's like, it's like, um, it's really, it's abstract re realism sort of where there's, it's realistic, but it's realistic. Like to me, that's sort of what it looks like. Like, I'll paint a puppy, let's say, with its purple and pink and green. And, you know, and to me, that makes sense. So it's realistic, but it's also kind of abstract. But, you know, yeah, I, mean, I get it. Yeah. But for me, it's just, you know, I don't know. It it, it gels up here somehow. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Well, so, Diana, what do you think? Yeah, unless there are any more questions or comments from the chat. Uh, Mary put typed in composition. No, I think she said composition. Yeah, composition. Yeah, isn't that what I said? No, I thought you said competition. No, no, co no. I thought you said competition. No, okay, no, no. So, uh, Mary, did you have any question or comment? How did the uh, auction go? It was um, a successful failure. Oh, boy. <laughs> Well, we wouldn't know. We wouldn't know. I'm not a fortune teller, so we were not going to know what was going to happen without doing it. And we're going to try to, I mean, we have it scheduled for tomorrow too, because it'll be a different time of day, maybe different day, different time of day. But we would have never known if we didn't try doing it. So, it's, so whatever. Hmm. Well, I did share it out and I actually did get some response. But, but they oh, yeah. To... One person, I well, one person identified themselves saying that, um, they had got they they had come over from your share, yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, that's wonderful. So somebody. Yeah. Did oh, yeah. It was a somebody with some. Yeah, somebody with a name blind in their channel. Oh, okay. Somebody no, I had seen somebody before. in the neighborhood, um, and they uh, we were curious what kind of auction it was because they they have a painting they want to sell, and I'm like, no, this is a this one is you know buy buy only. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which 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 auction was this? Did it did it happen today? I, I yeah, I, I've been yeah. out of it. My, I, I, on my day, channel, it's, I'm trying to do it. I've never done an online art auction before. So and, and me, it was me and my friend on my channel, mm -hmm. um, selling selling some some of our artwork. Well, that's brilliant. Yeah, that's that's so hard though. You know, you're you're so right. It's so great for you to put yourself out there like that. You, you never know. Like, you know, you know, anytime you do a show or anytime you mm -hmm. offer something up, anytime you put yourself out there, um, you never know what's going to happen. And, and, you know, and sometimes like, I don't know, it's, it's hard with the internet. Sometimes it seems like sometimes there's people there other times where'd everybody go. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just well, like, that's yeah. why we're doing it on two different days at two different that's times. Smart. So that's we did smart. 11 to started at 11 today, went to about one, 11 to 1 30 and then tomorrow we'll start at 4 p.m in the afternoon so maybe it'll bring a different crowd because it's a different day different different time of day and different time of uh different day but and our art is really reasonably priced i mean this is art that should be selling for a few hundred dollars and and it's we're selling it like my smaller work starting bids at 30 and my medium size starting bids at 40 which is all acrylic um, acrylic or mixed media on paper and mm -hmm. then the, my my larger ones, which is eleven by twelve by eighteen inches, those are starting bids at fifty. So it's very deep. Wow, discount. that's great. And we're trying that's, to tell people art is the art is the gift that keeps on giving. It's not going to, mm -hmm. it's not going to dis disintegrate. It's not going to break. It's not like it's not going to die like roses do. And mm -hmm. you know, it's art, and you can pass it on mm -hmm. from generation to generation. And yeah, and it's it's so special, especially this time of year. Everybody, everybody is looking for mm -hmm. gifts for their family, you know. And and that and if you give if you give an original piece of art like that, it it is so special, you know. It's just it's it's incredible, you know. And as a person, I'm not an artist at all, but you know, just from you know being with Lisa, Lisa and I've been together now for about twelve years, and just over the years, just learning art supplies are so expensive. <laughs> Yeah, aren't they? Oh <laughs> paint, what the heck? Paint, yeah, it's really, paint's got, yeah, paint's gotten to be pretty expensive. Yeah, yeah. In well, the mediums that you add in paint, doing everything. What? You know, when you when you start at the beginning, yeah, you know, Crayola works, but you know, as you as you progress, you know, you start going into the finer paints and and brushes and and stuff like that. And my goodness, does it get expensive? Mm -hmm. 
It does. It really does. There's, there's, there's a reason that artists charge the prices they do a lot of yeah, times. Yeah, I mean, know? you know, I mean, you know, a medium sized art like Diana's art. I mean, she's what starting at thirty or forty dollars for the medium size. Um, I venture to guess that that pretty much is at cost. Yeah, for, yeah. For I, all I, the materials, the canvas, you know, everything. And uh, basically the time and effort for her to paint that, she's giving it away free. My goodness. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You and need, people don't realize You need that, to raise you your know? prices, Lisa. <laughs> well, on, on Etsy, I do sell it for what I consider a fair price, which is not not deep discount. Like that, mm -hmm. like so the 12 by 18 would probably go, I think it's about $150. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's you know, and that's and that's and 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 that's still a really good price. I mean, it really is. It's, it's um, mm -hmm. it, you know, and that's yeah, that's one of the hard price. things. You know, it's it's a hard thing for um, for artists because you don't you you don't want to price yourself out of the market, but then you, if you underprice and you, you know, you got bills to pay, and you know, and it's it, it's it's a hard, it's a hard thing to. A lot of times, artists will undervalue their their time. And I know why, because you have to, because, you know, you're like, well, any money is better than no money, you know, like, you know, if we yeah. get some stuff money in, then that's great. But then like, you know, if you're, if your bathroom breaks and you have to have a plumber in they're they're you know, they aren't shy about um, having you pay for their time. Right. But, exactly. But they, that's, you know, like but, just where I worked in manufacturing all my life before I became legal. Yeah, of course, my, people, you know, those are necessities. And then, yes, then, there's, then there's the, 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 the sad misconception that the unfortunate misconception that people are going to think that art is frivolous and might be, and maybe it is frivolous to some people, to some people, it has a lot of meaning. Yeah. yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it's a luxury item. That's for sure. But also it being a, lo a luxury item is also an asset, like kind of like for your auction tomorrow. And you know, it, it is a gift. Art, art is a luxury item. So if someone goes to your auction and they buy one of your paintings tomorrow, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that is an incredible gift for someone to give someone because mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to get that anywhere else. Like there's nowhere else you can go in the world oh, and, yeah. and be able to get that, that art. One of a it, kind, right? Unique. Yeah, especially kind. originals. We're not talking about prints. I yeah, know. Yeah. I was like talking about that in the auction today too. Like I go, these are prices like probably that you would see for um, lim maybe limited edition prints in Walmart. I don't know. They well, they, you they, could they do a like a this, and these are those would be factory made, and this, yeah. you know, not not original, and yeah. Well, you know, I I I won't I won't say that I know. I, I I'm definitely not the business side of things. My my mm -hmm. wife handles the business side of the everything, and when she did, whenever she took over the the art business, um, the amount of charities I could work with tripled in the first year because um, I, I I can paint. But I can't do anything else, <laughs> so I don't know. There's a lot of stuff I don't really know about. But it's funny we're working with a lot of different galleries and museums, and working with different um, um, auctions and, and different things. We've you know, I've learned some stuff that works and that doesn't work. And oh, if okay. you ever, if you guys ever want to chat again, like you know, have another time. Like if you ever guys want to hang out again, um, oh, maybe, yeah. maybe maybe we could do like a like talk about business side of art. Oh I don't yeah, know, the business doing, side of art, and what and your your, your wife disability. would join us. Yeah, 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 yeah. I could definitely get her to join, but oh, because that pertains an artist to my the, channel. That certainly pertains to my channel because I'm an art channel. Well, there you go, and you know, and yeah. but the idea of being a person with a disability, art, art is such a wonderful thing to get into. But it's wow, also you can a way start a whole new series, Diana, on that. Oh yeah, I could start a whole new series. And that way well, I educate can... my viewers so that next time I have an art auction, they're educated. <laughs> you have to there educate them first. Yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. You know, that's 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 so uh, true. Though, I, a lot of I times love people you, don't Diana. Know. I love you. <laughs> but well, or if, man, I have enjoyed this so much, guys. And and but if yeah, if you guys ever want to talk about anything, you want to talk about guide dogs. You want to talk? I mean, I'll, I'll and then next time, if you ever want to talk about guide dogs, I'll definitely have her on camera. I'll bring yeah. her next time. Yeah, <laughs> she's probably right outside the door. Yeah, right there now. are YouTubers out there that have done series on. Uh, documenting from beginning to end how to get a guide dog oh wow yeah yeah and the, the guide dog like eagle um she is fine so it's a new kind of guide dog training that they do they don't do it in every school but it's a new but it's but like like if i went to the airport um and i needed to find the men's room she knows the difference between a men's bathroom and a lady's bathroom and she could find it even if it's gates and gates away it's like it's like a bomb sniffing dog but instead of bombs 
or drugs or something like that. She, she's trained to find bathrooms. And okay. in the bathroom, she knows the difference between a urinal and a stall. She she can find the sink, the trash can. Wow. She'll find the elevator for you, the button for an elevator. Wow. And with a smartphone and a smart dog like that, it just makes your independence skyrocket. Like it's just. Oh, it's I so bet. Cool. I bet. So I don't know. I'm, I'm a huge fan of dogs and, and, and I still, I, I've, tra- I've traveled. They're my goodness, neat. you know, I travel with a, a stick for um, a cane. I call, call it a stick. Yeah. I travel with a white cane for yeah. for eight yeah. years, and I've traveled with guide dog for twelve years now. And um, I'm still blown away by what these guide dogs can do. It's just ridiculous. But and what you can do with a stick to be? I'm a cane, white cane. <laughs> oh, the bell. Oh, the, there was an interesting. Uh, um, we know somebody, uh, you know, that she's a nailist and she does pedicures and, and, and nails. And I have uh, diabetes, so, I, you know, I, I get a regular <coughs> pedicure all the time um, just for to care for my feet because of diabetes. Right, right. Um, but she's a techie boy. She's got everything. Mm-hmm. People, you know, motion sensors at the front of the house and Amazon yeah. throwing her, somebody's there and this and that. Well, they just, they got two new dogs and mm-hmm. she's got the one dog trained and, and and the dog rings the bell to go outside. Oh, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. And then and then when they come back in, the, there's a little doorbell for the dog to put his nose on the doorbell to to, 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 to come in. That's brilliant. Oh, I love I love, I love her dogs already. I mean, that's just that's I've never heard of that ever. I said, what happened to the old fashioned? Or oh, 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 you know, oh, gotta <laughs> let them in, or they scratch on the glass or something. And she says that particular dog wouldn't bark, so they had to come with something different mm. because you would just stand there and you, you know, unless you hear something, you and not looking, the dog's just going to go to the bathroom right there because you didn't open the door. So, oh yeah, yeah. Well, she trained the dog now to use the bell. So the the dog rings the bell. He goes outside, and then when he wants to come in, he, instead of scratching and maybe destroying wood or you know the door itself, the frame or whatever, there's a little doorbell at head height, and he just taps it with his nose, and you let him in. That's it's, cool. It's, it was the coolest thing I ever heard of. That's really cool. Yeah, and I, I, I'm with her too. Like I, I have, I have, I have Alexa everywhere. Everything in my house is controlled that I can, and like every room is Alexa outside as Alexa. So in the backyard, um, I can just talk. But you know, asking for time and stuff. Like, like I remember used to. If anything has the word blind in it, then it's going to be so much more expensive. It's like ten times more expensive. Yeah, especially yeah. back in the day, if you had a clock that that, that would 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 read the time to you. You know, but now with Alexa, you know, you can have it anywhere. You get a little, little, little dots and it'll tell you the time. It'll tell you the weather. It'll, yep. it'll remind you to do things. Yep. You know, it's just, I love that. I love how much cheaper, how much easier. And, um, you know, and for me, like turning off the lights, I don't have to go around and try to find them all. I can just tell her to turn off the lights because as, as bulbs would burn out, I would replace them with smart bulbs. So it wasn't like really expensive to do the whole house. You know, I would just do it one little bulb at a time. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, and now I can just say, Hey, turn off the lights or turn them on or, um, nice. Nice. Yeah, and it just, it just makes it easier. I don't, I don't know. And plus, I, I'm a nerd, so so it's fun. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. So, have you ever heard of that bell uh, training before with dogs for? To go I, I've, I've, heard, I've heard I've heard of a dog hitting a bell before, but I I, I you know like with my guy dog, she does she doesn't bark either. But but I have a doggy door, so she'll go out. But if I'm somewhere, okay. if I'm in a hotel, she'll just come over and and she'll and she'll put her nose on my knee and she'll just bark okay. Me. Okay. I go like, oh, yeah, you want to go do something? And, and But I usually, like, if I'm traveling with my guide dog, I always walk her every few hours anyway. Like, she doesn't really have to go. Right. But I just figure, oh, you need a little break. Like, let's just yeah. go outside and you, you can be a dog for a little bit. Okay. And then, um, so, it's funny with the guide dog, like, you know, it's not really that that much of a thing. And my other little dog, it's a beagle. It's my son's dog. And that dog's nuts compared to a guide dog. She's real sweet, but she's not trained for anything special. So Right. Right. He's just like, meh. <laughs> <laughs> but she's a sweetheart. Yeah, yeah. There's somebody in here that knows you, but I don't. Another artist in here that knows you, but I don't know if if you know them. Ian Jackson. Ian Jackson. Oh, Ian. Hello, Ian. That knows me. 
Well, anyway, he's a fan of yours. I didn't know. If, I didn't know if you guys are friends or something. So because he's on Nathan's Facebook on, a lot. I think Ian told us about you. Ian Jackson. That, gosh, I I'm so. Ian's the one that I forget. That was a while ago. He yeah, might have been the one yeah. that told me about you. That that I can't even vaguely well, remember. It could be. That could be true. Well, that, thank you so much, Ian. Man, yeah, I, um, he's from uh, from England. He, pretty much the same area that I would. I actually was born in England, even though raised here in the United States. I was nine months old when came here to the States. So basically, I'm an American. But uh, but I was technically born in uh, Leeds, England. So there's an area there that's called Yorkshire. Yeah. Um, and it's in the countryside area. And that's where he's from. And that's where I'm from. So we're Yorkshiremen. And Diana had... Uh, at one time on our channel, uh, Ian Fun Friday, where Ian would yeah, we did that for about a year. He's a watercolor artist, uh, yeah, and he's a master blender. Uh, yeah, we, for, we're, we're, we're friends painting. on Facebook. I think I'd say, yeah, yeah I'm, and I'm he mentioned names. like we were talking about blindness and all that, and and he mentioned you. Oh man, that's well, and that's how so I got to meet you. you know, that's how we got to. Uh, check you out and get to meet you and then diana uh scored big with this interview with you <laughs> oh well, well thanks for yeah I, I did i've i've enjoyed this a lot and and thanks so much ian yeah names i'm terrible you know it's funny with the painting i remember the colors i use on a painting or pretty much every painting i've done when it comes to names and dates of stuff i'm horrible oh my goodness i'm just horrible with it i i i, I i'm not sure i know i'm doing some i'm you know, but that's where my wife is brilliant because I never know. I don't, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. To be honest, I know I've been told, <laughs> but I never remember. <laughs> yeah, he said that uh, Ian says that you have. Uh, he has watched uh, you on YouTube for some time now. Oh, thank, thanks so much, Ian. Ian, um, we, we we are friends on. You're you're the Ian that I'm friend. Ian Jackson, I'm friends with on Facebook, aren't you? Yeah, most likely it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Ian, yeah. Uh, Ian, do you have any questions before we wrap it up? Because well, yes, yeah, since Ian, you you know a lot about him. So, is there any questions you have for him? I, I know. I know Ian. He's very sophisticated. So he's got you know some real probably real good art questions. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh -huh. we'll wait for him to type some. Oh, yes, he does have a question, so now he's going to type it. Okay, very good. Mary from Pittsburgh Artist Studio says, very interesting info from John today. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Mary. Ooh, an art, a Pitts, Pittsburgh Art Studio. That's interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, artist studio. Oh, artist studio. Pittsburgh artist studio. Uh, okay, so what is your favorite medium to use? Okay. Um. Well, like for out, out of, I started with oils, but but acrylics are my favorite. I, I figured out ways to paint in watercolor and um, resin and um, oils and acrylic. But the great thing about a, acrylic are the different mediums to add to the paints. Um. So like, like, so the artistic medium would be acrylics, but that's because I can take like the same acrylic paint and I can turn it into a watercolor paint or I can turn it or, or I can make it act like an oil paint or, you know, or I can, I can put a different medium and make it work like a putty or make it or in a different medium and make it so hard you can carve it with a knife. So you can do all that with the same paint. So it just gives you this huge flexibility with just one paint without having to buy a million different paints and stuff. So I, I love that. Yeah. Um, but if it's a medium medium, like the mediums that you add to the paint, then but, well, I can't reach it. I was going to try to reach it, but it's, um, but it's a heavy stru structure gel and you can get that in golden and, and look li liquitex, but it just makes the, the, it makes it into like an oil paint consistency. So, so if you mix that into your, your, um, acrylic paint, it just makes it so, I don't know, so creamy and, and it'll, like if you paint with a paint knife, it just, it keeps every little peak, every little, little, if you have a brush, it'll keep all the little bristle, like all the ridges and stuff on the bristles. I just love that. I don't know. Cause it just makes a nice texture to feel and it feels good on your hand. So yeah, that's, that's my fave. <laughs> hmm. 
Okay, any other questions, Ian? The only bad thing is those, those mediums are so expensive, but um, but you don't they need a lot of They last long. Well, I, I guess it depends on how much you use them. Yeah, like I like um, like oh gosh, I, I have a I don't know what is this. I don't even know how big this is. I like I say I can't remember numbers, but I have a I have a jar this size. But I'll use this for this one painting, and it's uh, I don't, it's crazy. I don't know, but you know it, it helps you get the job done. So that's important. <laughs> uh, what do you guys? Uh, okay, here's the next question. What is your oh. favorite style of art expression? I don't know. Probably abstract real realism. Because that's kind of what I what I do, sort of. I mean, where it's like it's abstract color, but it's based on a realistic sort of premise. But, but I don't know. You know, it's one of my favorite things to be honest. Is, I mean, that's I like that because that's kind of what I lean towards. That's what I do. But, but it's so cool though to go to a show and to be able to talk to a painter, to an artist, and if if they'll let you touch their artwork, which they almost always do, especially if there's something to feel. And I've learned so much more from art about art from other artists than I have from any class I've ever taken or any book or article I've read on the internet, just getting in there, like, like how to paint with a paint knife. I read, I read paint knife books and this and that and all this. And it was still like, you know, it just didn't feel right. Like it didn't feel like, like it didn't feel like something I could do Then I went to a show where this, this lady was, would did all these incredible paint knife paintings and I spent like maybe an hour just talking to her about her paintings. And I learned so much more from that. I just, it's just, so I don't know. Um, I like the art that, that people will let me touch. And uh, so that's my favorite, but I've been fortunate with some museums. I've been able to touch some Van Gogh's and Monet's Picasso's and different things where they'll let me actually get in there and, and touch the stuff, which wow. has been fun. Wow. Sometimes it's on the down low. You know, they're like, don't, 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 don't tell anybody we'll let you touch this. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. a lot of times it's, it's not. So. Well, I would imagine that uh, some people are sensitive about that because of the oils in your, in your finger. Yeah. Like, did you, you didn't have to wear like cloth gloves or. It, 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 it depends. Like, um, um, most, most of the time I do, but it's like a really thin glove, but it depends too. Like, um, there, there's collectors who collect art and, and they're and they're much less. They don't care as much because they'll have the paintings clean. Like they're, they're they're so so if it's a if it's a person that owns it, um, I, that's 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 where I got to touch one of my Van Goghs and a and a some Picasso's because it was like an individual that owned it, which I would never. I can't even imagine. I can't imagine owning a piece of art like that. You know, good grief. But yeah. Um, but I think it's cool when people let you touch things. Oh like well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, how do but you, also, how do you uh -huh. clean art? It, well, it, it depends. Whole, you have to go to school, that special school for that uh, conservation. You can clean uh, clean art. Yeah. 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 yeah you sure the whole can. you have to you get very specialized training in it. Wow. One, one of the things though I do with all my paintings is that I put a I, I, put, I put a varnish on it to help protect it. But mm -hmm. it also it's because any of my paintings I want people to be able to touch it. Even if, even if there's not a very big texture or very little texture, sometimes I have a little bit of texture and I put the varnish on it and then you can't feel the texture anymore because the varnish is real thick, mm -hmm. but that's okay. But it protects the painting, but anybody that touches it, it makes it where you can clean it easier. Um, mm -hmm. It'll protect the paint from UV light and all that sort of stuff. So, right. but, um, but, but yeah, you sure can. And there's, there's people that um, the, their entire career is, is cleaning artwork and being able to, um, to, to preserve yeah, art it. Conservation. Yeah. There, that's the word. <laughs> that's it. Oh, we have another question from Ian. So, okay. Have you ever, have you ever done any 3D art like sculpture? Um, I've only done one sculpture. Um, the Dallas Museum of Art asked, asked me to do a piece. So I did a, um, a this sculpture is work. I mean, oh my goodness. Like it would take 30 minutes for me to, to, to sculpt the line where with a painting, you know, painting and go, whoop. There you got a line, and, you know, and it, if it's not good. You can erase it. That's what white paints for to erase everything, you know, and then boop, you can put another line in. But, um, but I did this, 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 um, I, I heard that at the museum, there, there was going to be this tour of um, children that had autism that were going to be going through the show. So I wanted something that the kids could relate to maybe. So I made this big amorphous sort of shape, you know, with a head and like two eyes, but it's all white. And I called it the hug, but it had a cutout in the body of it. 
so that, but it was cut out in the shape so that if a child came over and, and gave the, the figure a hug, it would fill in all the gaps. So, 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 so the figure would be whole. And it was so interesting, like to see like the adults and stuff, all these artsy people would, were going around, they're looking at it and they're, and they're talking about the, the ne ne negative space. Sorry, I can't talk. And about the lines and all this and the meaning this and that, and which, you know, which they're not wrong. I mean, like, like you try to put in as much thought as you can and all this. But then when, um, um, a child walked over and he gave the, the, the sculpture a hug and he kind of formed, he formed right into the sculpture. So it filled all the holes up and then wow. everybody went, oh, <laughs> no, that's what it is. You know, it's a, you know, the hmm. sculpture isn't complete until the child went over and gave it a hug. But but that's gosh, that's definitely I admire sculptors so much. And it's kind of like with the abstract artists, you know, uh, artists. I'm not I don't I don't think I'd be a very good abstract artist. I don't think I'm a very good sculptor but I really admire people that can do these things. You know. Have you ever painted now? Next question. Have you ever painted on two dimensional aluminum? Let me think about that. I don't, I two, two dimensional aluminum. No, it just, I, it, I, he I just it says, too. wait a minute. He says, uh, have aluminum you ever plate, painted but I, that's the same thing. People, artists don't usually paint on aluminum plates. I think what he means is like a two dimensional panel of aluminum. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I don't know, to be honest. I maybe um, I'm always experimenting with stuff. I have racks of art supplies over here where it's like different things. And, and I don't paint on glass, acrylic, brick. Um, I painted, painted on a giant turtle, like a plaster turtle. <laughs> so I, um, but I want to say I've painted on metal, but. Um, he's I done murals. Sure. Uh, he's done murals, Ian. Uh, if you rewind the replay, you'll hear all about it. But. Oh, I know, yeah, I know what about the like 747? A, that was metal, wasn't it? Yeah, or was yeah, that some high-tech plastic? Oh, yeah. You, you know, I was the, – the weird thing with that is, yeah, the the original the original is done on a canvas, and it's in the it's in a, a museum there. And and they, they were, they were going to have me paint the entire thing, and then the FAA stepped in and said, no, <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, that's illegal. <laughs> so, so Delta was like, really? <laughs> but so, so we ended up having um, – um, a skin put it on it. So we had, so I did the giant like canvas, which is in a museum down there in the Aeronautic, Aeronautic Museum. It's not giant, giant, but it's big. And then, and then the, it took like 19 people, two weeks to, to wrap the painting, the skin stuff on that. So oh, it was a bit. So the first idea was for me to paint it all, but then, but then we couldn't do it because they said no. But the so FAA the biggest thing I'm allow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it was just because I, I guess the planes go so high and fast, the paint rips off, but so the biggest thing I, I painted, like hands-on, was allowed to paint and finish, was it was um, um I've done a couple of four-story buildings, and and those and those are fun, but a lot of work. But four stories, wow. But 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 and my, and my wife drives the the um like the boom lift and stuff. So we we have little radios, so we can we can talk to each other and a little bit to the left, honey. Just yeah, exactly yeah, like. Well, yeah, you know, you, you have to make sure that you're really, really polite and really nice because yeah, you know, yeah, you, don't don't be hitting the brake too hard. Yeah. It's, it's rocking up here. <laughs> exactly, exactly. She says she's probably saying, "Don't don't piss me off because my hand's right on the lever." <laughs> there, there you go. Yeah, yeah. She might, she might, she might decide to to, to, to take a break. <laughs> Just walk away while you're up there for a while. Well, Ian Hello? has one last yeah. question. He says. So he, what do you think about that art that came out in December of 2019 of the banana duct tape to the wall? Oh, geez. With the Basil, <laughs> the very famous, uh, highly acclaimed Basil show in Miami. Well, you know, that's that that isn't my cup of tea either. I mean, like I don't, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't. I mean, if somebody wants it, and uh, you know, I can see that. But I, I don't know. It's like it's like um, it's kind of like the artists. Like there's there's some artists out there that that are like the highest paid artists. You know, they make millions and millions on every painting, and that there there's some of them that don't actually paint themselves. Like they'll come up with an idea and then they'll hire teams of artists to go and do it. Yeah, the old but masters, they're not actually some old masters did that. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, they they would have people in their in their studio that would help. Like that they, they, they were also being trained by them, and they would. You know, and they might have them like, oh yeah, block block out the C and block out this, do that and then. But it was, but they were painters. Like they would actually get in and, and do it, or yeah. they finish it. The but or somebody says, 
um, you know, I want I want a red garbage can and it's going to be on a blue thing. And then they, they just tell somebody to do it and they do it. And then they put, it, you know, I don't know. To me, like, I mean, that's I'm not saying it's not art, but it's just that kind of stuff. Like, I don't find it that interesting because I, I like it whenever an artist is actually touching the thing. You can see their creative process. They're they're manipulating the materials. They're, you know, the idea of a, a banana with duct tape. It's like, yeah, no one's thought of doing that before, kind of. But I don't know. It's you know, it's like you know, it's like it's like Duchamp and you know, and the, the toilet. It's right. like, oh, that's interesting the first time, but then you know, it's like after that, it's like, I don't know. It's I'm not. I don't know if you can tell. I'm not a huge fan. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that would be like but, an you know an infant at the you know on their high chair and they're eating spaghetti and they throw it against the wall and and they were like okay that's that's his art I'm gonna leave the wall like that <laughs> yeah yeah you know it's just to me it's yeah. just not it's, it's not as interesting it's not something I'd want to collect yeah like like yeah. like like I'd I'd much rather tune in tomorrow like Diana like when you're doing your auction. And get mm-hmm. something there, then I would a duct tape banana to a wall because yeah, there's process and there's thought behind that, and there's caring, and the actual artist was had the materials and yes. they, they they and they executed the plan, which I think is nice. Like even if you're doing something like like I've worked on murals where we've had other people that were working too, but you know, but it's but you know you're there every step and you're doing the most the bulk of the painting and you're you're doing all the painting really, but it's just you know. Sometimes you have a project where you need other people involved because, you know, they're building the building and they're not going to wait for you or something. So you're mm-hmm. like, okay, you know, and I mean, so I understand something, but I don't know, just gosh, gosh, guys, you know, it doesn't feel <laughs> duct tape and a banana isn't, I don't know. It, it doesn't, it, it doesn't really get me all excited. <laughs> although, although I do like the thing with with Banksy where he had that that painting and they shredded half of and it, and then they shredded it as soon as it per- as soon as it was purchased. Yeah, but they only shredded half of it, which was brilliant because he knew, yeah, okay. you know, there's only going to be one half shredded painting, and it's all there, and you know, and then and then suddenly the value went way up, you know, and it was like, oh, yeah, but you know, it's making a statement, and it's kind of cool, and that's kind of fun, but you know, the next person that does that, it's, it's not as interesting because you know, you know, mm-hmm. like it's already been said, you know, so I don't know. That's just me. I'm a weirdo. How much? How much time you got, Diana? How long do you want to go? And how? Uh, how are you doing, John? Well, you know, I, I'm going to have to leave in a little bit. I'm afraid. Okay. Um, okay. We're supposed to be at a thing at six thirty. Here, okay. at, well, six thirty our time. I guess you, you. You. It's like it's it's like seven y'all's time, isn't it? No. Paul is on your time. Paul Central also. I'm, I'm oh. Central like you. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's. Mm. It's why, uh, why I, I get, I, I'm getting a little tired. Yeah, it's six oh nine. So yeah, we better wrap it up. I was gonna ask if Ian wanted to come up on panel because he's a very interesting person to talk to about art. But uh, maybe next time, Ian. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, because we have like fifteen minutes left. Oh, do we? Well, it's six. Well, now I think John. John says he has to leave. He he's got to be somewhere at six thirty. Yeah. Oh, but I, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm. You are still okay? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I. Um, well, put the put the link in the chat, or do you still got Ian on Facebook, Diana? Oh, uh, I guess we, maybe we should bring on the channel because panel because he still has another question. Yeah, just come up on panel for just just oh, a let, bit. Let me okay. Uh, Ian, I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the um. The link in the chat. Hold on, let me get it. Where is it? He's an outstanding uh, com- conversationalist too. <laughs> You'll really like him. Oh, his camera's not set up. Well, yeah, but you can. Okay, still so he can't do it. Well, he doesn't have to show his face. Is that yeah. a problem? Can you can he do it without showing face his face? Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe <clears throat> I don't think he has to have his camera. You don't need your camera, uh, Ian. Okay, just post it in the chat in case. Okay, in case. Tell us if yes or no, if you can come off. Let's see if he can. Just click on the link and see if it works. 
you just won't have you know your camera if it doesn't work and you guys want to do another chat sometime um yeah that'd be fine we can oh great we okay oh. we do this every month oh that's cool and, yeah, for the uh, YouTube, the YouTube line community, uh, we either do it at twelve. Um, no, I'm sorry, on January second, we're changing it from noon. We're not going to do it at noon. We're going to try to do it at three p.m. Uh, so we change it back and forth depending on the person, the guest, whether they prefer five p.m. Saturday or if they prefer three p.m. on a Sunday. So on January second, our guest prefers three p.m. on Sunday as opposed to Saturday. Oh. Plus, so, we try okay, to it's always it the first Saturday. It's always the first Saturday or Sunday of the month for my for the I do all kinds of other live streaming, but this is for the YouTube blind community. It's the first Saturday or Sunday of the month. Here, yeah, here is Ian. All right. Plus, so, we okay, it's always the first Saturday. It's always the first Saturday or Sunday of the month for my for the I do all kinds of other live streaming, but this yeah, is you'll have to turn the, the, the volume down, Ian. Here, yeah, here's Ian. All right. Well, well, I'm going to have to go. Yeah, you'll have to turn the volume. There you go. There you go. There you go, Ace. Yeah. Hey, Ian. Hello. It's nice to see you. Oh, uh, it's good to be seen. <laughs> how, 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 how are you today? I, I, I feel it's got a... a a very interesting graphical feel to it. Oh, what, what, what does? I'm sorry, I think I missed. Graphical, uh, oh, graphic art feel. You know, like a, a minimalist. If you were doing it for like printing, many years ago before we had full technical color, they would limit the amount of colors that you have. Uh, in it so it can be published and printed mm. and it, uh, the ones behind you the, uh, the r2d2 for example lim limited colors but it, it it really makes it look as though it's real yeah oh, so. you, you could absolutely bombard your painting with tons and tons of color but you don't need to it, it it's like less is more Oh, I like I like that. That's that's awesome. I I knew I when I first was painting, I couldn't blend or so every color mm -hmm. had to be separate because <laughs> there was I didn't have any other choice. Yeah. So, and then and now I can do more blending and, sh and shadows. But yeah. um, but I don't know. It's it's nice to. There's some paintings that is a bit of a riot of color. I I've got to admit. I, oh yeah. I, I gotta go a little. I might go a little overboard, but um, but yeah, it's so, it's. So I don't know. It's fun to play that, Don't know. There are styles that absolutely need it. A bombardment of color but um more often than not if you can get away with being able to blend one color into another you can get the um mirage of um this color has got lots of colors even though it's only got basic colors in it yeah that's i, I love that you know and um you know one, one, one of the things that i, I try to do too is, is is to do that with drawing so that so mm -hmm. that i just have the, a few lines that I, I need to be able to get the impression across so so if i'm drawing a face um if you were to like to zoom in and really like look at just one little part of the face like the nose or part of the nose um it, it may not look like a nose at all until you back up and you you take in the whole face as a whole um you know because because i want the the image to kind of form in the person's mind so you know trying to keep the the, the color I try to keep really bright colors, but each color is like an idea or a feeling. And then we try to make the lines where it's just sparse as, as possible. Um, I have a, here, let me see. I don't know if I can, I'm going to try to find my camera. Sorry if I bump it. I have it, it's hanging from my pole up here. I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> but here, I have a, I have a portrait perfect. I did of me. I don't know if you can see it. It looks it's like oh, a part yeah. gorilla. It's on yeah. a Zippo lighter. I was going to, oh. years ago, I thought, oh, you know what? It'd be cool to put art on a Zippo lighter. Yeah. And then I never did. I just did this one. Mm -hmm. But so but like but like if you were to zoom in on like one nostril or or, or part of the hair, it, it it wouldn't look right. You know, I mean you wouldn't know like, oh that's that's a nostril on a human gorilla or something. Well, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Kind of weird. Huh. I just I was trying to well, think of what paintings I have around me. I thought, oh I don't 
really have that much around me. I have a lighter. <laughs> <laughs> you got Albert behind you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's covering a window. I know that you generally paint through, um, you know, feeling you, you know, around your painting. Uh, how do you how do you get your drawing accurate? Is, is that again a feeling sensation? That is, that is. And with somebody, like, if it's somebody that I can touch their face and feel, I'll, right. I'll touch their face. If it's somebody like Albert Einstein who's passed away, yeah. um, there's 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 technology you can get where it'll take a photo and reduce it to lines, and right. and you can either have it printed out, but that's really expensive. So the other way is there's the, on a touchscreen device. Um, there's apps that'll that'll when you're touching the screen it'll vibrate as you're touching the lines and it'll make a sound. So if it's a thin yeah. line, it'll it'll make like a higher sound and it'll vibrate kind of really fast. And a thicker line, it'll vibrate more, but it'll make a lower sound. So you can figure out the composition, uh, which mm -hmm. is pretty exciting. And then there's other there's other things that are really cool. But mm -hmm. um, but really, when it comes to drawing, it's sort of like the same way that a sighted person will is except. Um, you just start with some lines. So like you start with the basic idea, like, like if it's a landscape, you know, if you're not used to drawing, drawing trees and landscapes are a really good place to start. But like you can put in a line, you can feel it. If you don't like it, you put in another line. Like if you're sighted, one of the, one of the things that they'll do in a drawing workshop is, you know, say if you want to make a, a nose, you may do like 10, 10, 10 different lines, lines that are like the bridge of the nose. Then you just look at, and you make them really light. Then you figure out which one is kind of really going the way that you imagine in your mind is right. Then you darken that one. So for every line that you is a correct one, you've made like 10 mistakes. So whenever I'm drawing something, I, I'll draw it. And if it's not right, I'll white it out, you know, and then I'll, I'll just draw another one that's a little bit different. Okay. You know, you know, so I'll just keep correcting it. And so it's just a little correction after a little correction after this and that. And it kind of like, um, I was, well, I'll knock something over if I move it now. But that one I was showing earlier, I was drawing a horse. Like I, I went back, you know, a little while ago and I was feeling where I had drawn and I could feel like I, I, um, he's got a problem with his nose. Like he, he's running to a fence or a tree or something. because His nose is big. Um, one of his eyes isn't right. You know, so like the shapes are just off, but, but I wouldn't know that if I hadn't drawn already made these lines. So I'll, 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 I'll draw a line that feels better, like correct it. And then I'll white out the other line, you know, I'll, I'll take it away. I was just thinking about, um, I forget all the cards. Is it William Morris? And he used to make um, vases. And what he used to do, uh, to he flooded colour into areas of raised, um, uh, like a flower or a, a, anything like that. He'd raise the edges. And that, but obviously he used wet clay. I wonder whether you could, like, use have some flexible wire and, and and then you've got the shape of it or or some blue tack that you roll into very long strings and, and shape it out like that. That would be yeah, a yeah, you know, technique to have a look at. Yeah, you know, you sure can. There, there's also this stuff. Um, it's like wire that's covered in wax and you can bend it in different shapes and you can stick yeah. it to paper. And, and there's people that have used that. Um, generally what I do, because I, I, I guess I had the background in illustration and drawing is that mm -hmm. it made that I, I'll, I'll mix different inks, not inks, but paints to draw with. And when I first started, everything had to be a big, thick raised line. Then over time that line could get thinner. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing about having a thinner line, like a thick line is great because it's texture and it's fun to feel and all that. But, but when you're working out a sketch, it's nice to have a thin line. That's just like kind of tacky if you can get away with it. And if you can feel it and understand it, uh, because because if you don't like it, it's a lot easier to white it out, you know, and be able to to correct it. So before, when I would have these big thick lines, I would have the finished drawing, but then all around it, you would have all these other lines that weren't a part of the painting anymore. But you know, somebody could still see them, you know, even though that wasn't going to be the, the the final line. But being able to to mix like the different mediums and with the paint to make it kind of a tacky kind of rubber cement feel. I, I could put another paint over it and that takes that tacky feeling away. So suddenly to me, it's gone. And I, you know, and then I could put another line right over it or near it, you know, going a little bit different angle. And then, and, then, and that's the new tacky little line. And, and that'll stay as long as I need it there. And then, you know, and then 
so a lot of times I'm putting in lines just to let me know not to go well, what I've done here or where a shadow is going to be or where, you know, just sort of like different um, notes for me. And then it was just, it just gets covered up as I'm working, you know, but so, so a lot of times I'm redrawing the same thing many times because I'll have to cover it up, mm -hmm. redraw it, cover it up, redraw it. Well, that, that's something that all of us have to do sometimes, you know, even <laughs> well sighted people, I can draw something and I'll look at it 10 minutes later and I'll go, oh, what have I done there? And redraw it. So. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So, and that's brilliant, you know, and um, I, th I think a lot of times people who are just getting into art, you know, like, mm -hmm. so um, thinks, you know, like they say, oh, I can't draw or I can't sketch and all this. And, mm -hmm. and then you'll tell them, well, you know, everybody, it, it takes time. Like, you know, it doesn't really, you know, it's mm -hmm. not, you know, you oh, don't. Yeah. You know, if you expect your first little drawing and sketch and all that to be great, every you know, it's not. If it happens to be, that's amazing. Like, whoa, <laughs> that's, that's an amazing it's day. Bonus, isn't it? Yeah. He was like, wow, but you know, that isn't I don't know, for me at least. That doesn't happen very often. Like, I usually end up with horses with messed up noses and eyes that I got to fix. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say, I, I look at your work and I look uh, as a, 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 a person who's a sighted person. I am blind in one eye, but. Um, uh, I look at it with great envy. Oh well, I I I I appreciate that. I, you know, if you were here in my studio, you could see paintings from twenty years where it's just a couple mm -hmm. colors and a couple things. And um, I'm always like 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 I want my paintings to be different than what they are now. So you're always pushing mm -hmm. it. You know, I'm always trying to come up with different techniques and stuff so that mm -hmm. maybe. In five years, my I'll look back at these paintings and say, "Oh, oh, they're so simple! Like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know how to do this yet, or I know how to do that." And mm -hmm. I don't know. it's a wonderful thing about art, though, is you can just keep learning. And it, well, the, the good thing about art is, is one that is part of your journey. Just when you think you are getting a, 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 a particular position, five years later, when you're looking back at it and you've developed and you've moved on that's it. It, it it's a fluid thing and it moves all the time art yeah it, that's so true really new. and uh, anybody can get on that ladder and have it as a lifelong thing in their life i would you i i say this to people especially who, who have problems with their eyesight you know the artist turner mm -hmm. is, uh, renowned artist throughout his yeah, life yeah. a working artist uh it, it was a good artist but uh he didn't really become the great artist that he is until he lost his sight wow and, and then that's where you get that impressionistic very early like blended because he could not see properly I, um, and you see, whatever your issue is might give you an opportunity in life. We are uh, it, it, just because you have this issue or that issue, don't mean to say it can stop you. You just need to find a way around it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's so true. That's brilliant. Not being positive about yourself, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's so true. I've, I've got a bit of an advantage, you know. Uh, I'm a I'm a cyclops when it comes to um, being able to see. I've got one good eye, that one there, <laughs> uh, and one bad eye that I can't see out of. Now you know when the teacher at school to squint your eyes so that you can see things in a different way. Well, all yeah. I like to do is, is, you know, do that. Then all I see is, is like patterns of fuzzed out colour. Oh. So I don't see detail. So I'm able to like see things in a completely different way. So I consider that to some degree to be a blessing. Oh, that's, that's, well, that's you know, brilliant. That's a, that's a great way to people, view it too. Positive outlook, can't you? I know it would be nice to have full sightedness, but maybe you don't move on from, like I said, with Turner. He may not have gone on to be that great artist. 
had he have not gone blind. That's true. That's true. That's interesting. I've heard, you know, heard something. there was one one way to look at it because when we talked about the, your journey, uh, uh, John, uh, when mm -hmm. you lost your sight and you were moving forward, you are was an artist previously. Do you think that you have been would have been more as successful in your art over the past twenty years if you never lost your vision? I don't. I don't think I would have ever shown anybody my art. Like, like growing up, I, 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 I drew mm -hmm. all the time. Like I, I drew every day and, and it was just my way is my, for some reason that made sense to my brain. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I always drew like, and it was just my way of dealing with things. And, and, and I really drew like every day. And, but it was, but it wasn't something that I just shared with anybody. Like I, I would write little stories and I would share the stories, but I would never draw, share my drawings. I didn't care if people saw them, but it wasn't, Right. really a thing and it, it right. was the act of losing the eyesight i think and yeah just trying trying to reconnect with people and yes and it took it, it through through learning the orientation mobility that's what got me into figuring out how to how to draw again you know how to paint he used you know, the o and o and m training ian and and that training helped them it's almost like you're walking through the park and you're using your o and m training while he's doing the same thing on the canvas yeah. Yeah. So it's just, you know, it's just guiding your way across the canvas. And so for me, and when I started being able to do that, 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 that became a way for me to reconnect with people because it took, it, it took longer for me to be able to use the screen readers like jaws and, and um, to, I mean, I could use them. Okay. For writing some like reports in school, but like you're doing creative writing, it just sounded so robotic. You know, nah, 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 nah. You know it's just, it, yeah. it was that it took a long time. I have a hard time. time getting through that. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. And, stuff. At least with the drawing, it was cathartic. Like every time, even if my drawings really sucked and everything, the paintings, I, it, you know, it didn't matter. Like it didn't matter. It doesn't matter how good your art is or how good your sketches are or anything. You know, you, you're focusing on it and that's, that's where you're getting the benefit. So, so it was making me feel better while I was doing it. So, mm -hmm. and then, and then I was able to kind of connect with people and, and that's, that's really what helped us. I, I don't think if I lost my eyesight, there wouldn't have been any reason for me to ever really show people my artwork or, yeah. you know, to. So it kind of changed your life in a good way. It's almost it like did. a bless, blessing in disguise because now, now you're doing, you know, charity events, murals, uh, uh, workshops, um, you know, you're giving back to the community, you know. And who, and I have no idea what I would have done before. Like my, my idea before was to, to be a professor, like to go back and become a teacher. And that's really yeah. what I wanted to do. And, and, um, and maybe one day I'll do it, but, um, but then Good. things just take a different turn. And, you know, when, you know, I get a chance to go and talk to a group, you know, somewhere and they're like, you know, Hey, do you want to do this? And I'll be like, heck yeah, I do. <laughs> so let's, let's go do that. And, mm -hmm. You know, and Amazing. kept putting, yes, I don't know, but I'm, I hate to say it guys, but I, I think I'm going to have to go. I think I'm, yeah. I'm supposed to be somewhere like right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Thank you so much, late, John. <laughs> well, guys, <laughs> Thank you so much. And Diana, Ian, Paul, guys, thanks so much for letting me be here tonight. Oh, I no, it's it. truly an honor. You know, I, you know, we, I am I am honored to have you here as our guest. Oh, well, well thank you. And yeah, uh, I'm same, same too. here. Oh, thank, thank you. And hey, if you guys ever want to chat again, let me know. Or, and, um, that, yeah, that, that, okay. I, I, would, I would love to. I would love to stay in touch with you guys. Yeah. OK, great. All right. Well. Next month is January 2nd. Sunday, January 2nd at 3 p.m. Eastern sure. Standard Time. And who are we having? Our yet, guest or? is Mary Brucker, who is a social. She's the the head social worker or whatever at the um at our local blind association oh, okay. at our Wonderful. county, Montgomery County Blind Association. Oh, very good. Very good. Well, she's, you're... Yeah. well she's uh She's totally blind. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, John, again. Ian, Thank you, John. Take, take care, buddy. Oh, uh, thanks, you guys. guys. Doing well. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. Bye.